All right. Why airlines lost their privilege? Uh, hey, Bill. Big fan. Love your podcast. You recently asked why airlines are not as prestigious as it was in the 70s. As a pilot, I have an answer for you. Oh, I love when the pilots write in. Sky pilot. Why isn't it still great? In 1978. Huh? I'm Jimmy Carter. Jimmy Carter signed the Airline Deregulation Act. Oh, leave it to a peanut farmer from Georgia to ruin the fucking prestige of airline travel. Prior to this law, the government allowed equal usage of federal airways among all the airlines. All right, you already lost me. Let me read this slower. The government allowed equal usage of federal airways among all airlines. So the only way for airlines to compete effectively was with good customer service. Okay, after the law went into effect... Airlines were able to bid for exclusive usage of certain airways. Airways are basically the streets in the sky. So different. Okay. Oh, I see. So then, and everybody had their territory. So it was like, that's right. There was Eastern Airlines. They just flew there. Okay. All right. American and United flew cross country. So it was like wrestling back in the day where everybody had their territories. And then rather than having one guy dominate the whole thing like vince it became a bidding war okay after the law went into effect airlines were able to bid exclusive usage of certain airways so airways essentially gained monopolies on most of their routes with customers having little or no say in which airline to take the airlines were able to get us by the balls so now airlines business strategy has shifted from good customer service to monopolizing their airways and packing as many people as possible into their plane. Planes. Hope this helps. Uh, it started to. What should I look up? I should look up the Airline Deregulation Act. Now that all of a sudden, in the era of fake news, I'm, I'm being suddenly being held accountable for what the fuck I said. I can't believe this. I, you guys are so disappointing me. Can somebody please write in and mock these fucking assholes? All right, not saying the the the, uh, the pilot here. All right, Airline Deregulation Act. Airline Deregulation Act. Jimmy Carter and effects. Let's see what we got here. Oh my God! All right, Wiki, a law that changed the airline industry. That's the one that looks like okay. This is the one I will read up on. Are you guys going to try to make me informed? And then I'll, then you know what happens when you, you know what happens to become you informed? You become an arrogant ass. You know, you start smoking a pipe. Your fucking eyebrows are always trying to touch each other as you wrinkle up your forehead. No one wants to be around that. All right. A law that changed the airline industry beyond recognition, 1978. All right. Okay. Before deregulations, airlines competed on service alone as fares were regulated by the government. I didn't know that. I mean, granted, I was fucking 10 years old, 1978. Many remember this era fondly as the golden age of aviation, when stewardesses as flight attendants uh, were then known, carved I can Chateaubriand on rolling silver carts, and airlines put piano lounges in upper decks of their Boeing 747s, Passengers dressed up to board flights and flying was glamorous and exciting and mainly for the rich. Ah, that's why the liberals deregulation resulted in the rise of a new kind of airline, the low cost carrier LCC. At the time of deregulation, Southwest Airline was a small regional airline prevented by CAB rules. I don't know what that is from flying outside of Texas. Today, Southwest is the largest domestic U.S. carrier in terms of passenger traffic, something no one could have foreseen in 1978. Yeah, and that's back when stewardesses were fucking hot. So now it's a bunch of animals. They pack us all in, and then it's just like, yeah, all the hotties are like, well, fuck this. I'm going to go uh, sell jello shots at a goddamn one of those DJ shows. Wah, bee, 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 wah, 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 right? Southwest is a success story, but deregulation allowed. Yeah, I, I hate flying Southwest. 
I fucking hate it. You know what? I hate how the, the stewardesses sit there making jokes and fucking around. It's like, dude, my life is in your hands here. You're not making me more relaxed doing your fucking Dean Martin impression. Uh, but deregulation allowed airlines to innovate new business models. People, people express. I remember that. Remember Value Jet? That one went down. People express may have come and gone. It may someday be revived, but it, it and others like it shook up the white glove world of the U.S. airline industry and democratized travel. Hope I said that right. We may peer through our rose-colored glasses and yearn for the days of Chateaubriand and piano lounges, but ultimately companies like Southwest and newer ones like Spirit allowed more people to fly more often. Yeah, and now look at the result. You got people with no shoes on walking into the bathroom. Oh, my God, it all fucking came full circle. Holy shit, do I like being informed? Deregulation left the international carriers like Pan Am and Braniff and to a lesser extent, TWA, Trans World Airlines, without robust domestic feeder networks. I don't know what that means. And it allowed domestic carriers like Delta Airlines to apply for international routes, Pan Am and Braniff scrambled to create domestic networks, but ultimately were unsuccessful. Although it took until 2000 for TWA to be absorbed into American airlines. And some argue that massive consolidation of the U.S. airline industry in the last decade, which has resulted in three large carriers, four when Southwest is included, is deregulation's final act. The network carriers that survived Delta United and American learned to be tough competitors and combined existing domestic networks with the international networks acquired in large part by carriers like Pan Am that didn't make it. Get the fuck out of here. So now they have to drag people off flights, barefooted lunatics, and then you got people fucking, you know, you ever see those people that just fly around the world all the time trying to get miles and shit? Just created all these bottom feeders. Wow. Do you think a VIP airline would, would make it? I wonder. You know, in this era of Donald Trump, if they just if they didn't even try to be nice, just be I wish I wish I could do a Trump impression. Just be a lot of animals. They're flying barefoot, a lot of barefoot. And then, you know, all the liberals would be like, Yeah, were you saying that barefooted people shouldn't be allowed to be a lot of bare feet, a lot of bare feet. <laughs> Dude, can you, what if, what if they had a fucking, you, you couldn't do it nowadays. If you had a fucking top line airline, okay? All first class seats, all hot stewardesses, you know? First of all, all the fucking, you know, all the fucking feminists would be up in arms. Would all be up in arms saying that they, you're objectifying these women, blah, 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 blah. And at the end of the, I don't know. I agree with some of that feminist shit, but a lot of times I just feel like it's women who aren't good looking, hating on good looking women and just being mad that good looking women don't have to work as hard. You know, it's like that whole thing that you're going to somehow get people to give not as good looking women not as good looking men, not as strong men, like a chance. That's not how it works. You got to like, you got to look at it like sports and realize that you're not the Jordan. You're not Sidney Crosby. All right. You're on the fourth line. Okay. So what you have to be is you have to be a fucking, you got to be a gamer. You know, this is coming from a bald redheaded male. So go fuck yourself. If you think I'm being elitist here. Okay. You got to be scrappy. You got to go in the corners. All right. You got to drop the gloves every once in a while. You got to do that. Okay, you're not going to get the calls. You're going to have to work 10 times fucking harder than other people to get, you know, half as much or however the expression goes. But it's it'll make you stronger. You know, what's great is your fall from grace from your youth sixth as you slide into a four is not that bad. But at the end of everybody's life, everybody looks like a four or two. Okay. But you, you have a nice soft landing. You do a little bit of a belly flop. You get the wind knocked out of you between 20 and 60. All right? These fucking 10s. I mean, they're falling off the top of a goddamn building. Okay? They, and a lot of them, they don't survive it. They don't. If you look at their Botox faces, they look like they landed face first. Their fucking lips are all swollen. 
I mean, Jesus Christ, look at these fucking, my, Nia watches this show and these women will not stop taking fat from the back of their arms and injected them in their ass. And they got these stupid looking fucking asses now and their legs look like my legs with this weird, like they look like ostriches. <laughs> I don't know why they did that. I, I, just, I just don't fucking understand why. Like at what point? It's like they're literally like Michael Jackson, where Michael Jackson couldn't see what he's doing to his face. These women cannot see what they're doing to their asses. I don't understand it. So anyways, you know what? That was actually fascinating. And I make fun of the fact that I'm, I'm not a well-read guy because it gives me license to be lazy. And that's what I like to do best. Now, here's something I wanted to talk to you guys about. I just flew up here to fucking Winnipeg and I don't know what happened but the fucking level of animal that was on my flight dude this guy next to me you know I told you I ride up front I didn't call it first class it's just human class they treat you like a human being that's all that happens up front if you ever wondered they don't smash you all in the back and all that shit right so I'm waiting to get on, right? So they have people with wheelchairs. They get on first. Then, you know, fucking people with kids. If you're in the military, you know, if you're wearing a red shirt, they got like a bunch of things, right? So people who are sitting in first class, they're getting all huffy. Going, when's first class going to board, right? (laughs) You know that white guy with the loafers and no socks? Like that fucking energy, right? So... We're going to get on in this fucking fat fuck, you know, in his 20s, just completely blown out body, big, giant, fat boys. I'm a Hollywood producer, fucking glasses, stupid hat, wearing sweatpants and some big, comfy fucking shirt, you know, just giving into the fact. That's why he's fat. All these fat people that wear comfortable clothes, you're going to be fat forever because you're because you're never you're not uncomfortable. You got to keep the clothes that you had when you were that weight. You don't go to the fucking dry cleaner or go to the goddamn Nike store and buy yourself a giant fucking sleeping bag with drawstrings on it because you're never going to really feel how fat you are until you don't go to get on a fucking airplane. Right? So I'm, so this guy's trying to cut the fucking line, right? And, uh, you know, I sort of box him out. And uh, they scan my thing, and I get a go to get on the flight. And this fucking fat fuck comes down the thing, and he literally he gets on the plane. He goes, "Where am I sitting up front?" Like really, like like weird. Like you can't just look at the lady. Like looks at the ticket, and he's fucking sitting right next to me. So I'm putting my shit in the overhead compartment. He just goes, "Excuse me." And he fucking goes to brush right by me. I said, "Hey, buddy, I go watch out for my bag." And he's like, "Oh, sorry." He kind of backed back out again, you know? He wasn't going to hit my bag. I just didn't like how he fucking brushed right by me, right? So he sits down, right? This giant fucking snowman-looking douchebag, right? Sits down, and he's so fat. I'm in first class. He's still spilling into my seat, fucking elbowing me and all that type of shit. It's just like, this is not what I'm spending my sky miles on, you know? So um, the lady... The stewardess comes over. She goes, you know, can I get you guys something to drink, right? I order a drink. And the guy goes, can I, can I have a blanket? They go, she goes, yes. Yeah. So when she comes out with the blanket, she holds it out to him. He just fucking rips it out of her hand and, like, opened it up. And just the way he was so choppy and, like, aggressive yet couldn't find his seat, I, I was like, this guy, I don't know what this is. I don't know what the fuck this is. Is this guy on drugs? Is he autistic? Is it Asperger? I don't fucking know because I don't really know what the symptoms of any of that shit is. You know, I saw the Rain Man and, uh, you know, I don't know what else. I fucking went on a podcast one time with somebody at Asperger. I can't fucking tell. I just don't know that they act a little off. All right. And I'm not going to be yet another douchebag who doesn't have a psychology degree, let alone practicing in that profession to start analyzing somebody's mental situation. So then he fucking sits there. Okay. And he rips the, the blanket open because somehow this tub of shit is going to get fucking cold. And uh, he starts doing the, uh, what's that thing where you, 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 restless leg syndrome. 
except his leg weighs as much as my entire body. So it's like actually shaking the plane. And uh, fortunately, it was a red eye. I'm like, God, you know, let this fucking guy just go to sleep. But then is he going to have sleep apnea? I don't know what. Long story short, we finally end up, I connected in Minneapolis. Okay. And I, when I got up, I deliberately stood in a way where he couldn't get out of his seat. Because I knew he was going to brush by me once again and be fucking rude. Whatever the fuck his deal is. So I passive aggressively stand there. So I get off the plane. I'm like, great, I don't have to fucking deal with this guy anymore, right? So I get off the plane. And as I'm standing there trying to figure out where my connecting flight gate is, this fucking jerk off comes walking off the plane. And he's still wearing the blanket. He's got it wrapped around him. Oh, by the way, he was also, of course, wearing sandals. You know, like all animals do. They just, they have to have their feet out. You know? Like animals. Animals are all barefoot. They don't have shoes. Right? So these guys have sandals because they're half an animal. Like, you know what I mean? If you're in a hot climate or you're fucking at the beach or whatever, going down to the pool, the spa, that, that's sandals. Anyways. So he comes walking off the plane and then just walks up to the, you know those, those little fucking cars that they drive fat people around and old people, blind people and stuff, you know? And uh, he walks up to one of those guys and goes, excuse me, sir. He goes, what do I do for the next five hours while I wait for my flight? And that's when I was like, all right, this guy's, <laughs> this guy's fucked up. And the guy's like, uh, I, it's a food court. <laughs> So then he walks up to the ticket lady. Now I'm just standing there watching him because I got enough time because now it's entertaining watching him meet people and watching them doing the math on their face. You know, is this you see it on their face like what the fuck am I dealing with? So he talks to the ticket agent, freaks her out, then comes walking back and he walks up to the car and he just goes, he goes, sir, where are you taking me? <laughs> That's all. And you pop psychologist, the guy finally just goes, there's a food court down there. And he just wandered off still wearing the blanket. Now, my buddy that I'm working with this week, he was trying to say that he thought the guy was on pills. I have no idea what the fuck it was, but uh, it was hilarious. But anyways, the level of fucking animal. So that guy was there. There was another guy on my flight. He was wearing pajama, po- pajama bottoms and he had a neck, pi- neck pillow. I mean... I don't even know where to go from there. There was another guy who had the worst hat I've ever seen, and he was carrying a hard shell case for the hat. You know what I mean? Or maybe that was his good hat, and he was wearing his bad hat on the flight. I don't know. It's like, what, what are you, running for president in 1905 and some shit? Like, you're riding on a goddamn... Who has a fucking hat box? What kind of a man has a hat box? And it was a solid plastic one, like, like a snare drum case, but it was for a fucking hat. Um... So for whatever reason, I get here to the hotel and I'm reading about this plane crash. Air Canada flight 624. They say the timeline of the crash, right? 10.05, the plane leaves. 10.56, Air Canada tells flight crew uh, that an Air Canada flight had landed on Halifax runway 05 after a missed approach due to insufficient visibility because of weather conditions. Controller tells the crew to hold at 9,000 feet. Blah, 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 right? The fucking crew asked to confirm that the lights are on, setting five. Controller says they're on four. They'll eventually be on five. They remain on four. Long story short, this fucking guy flying this thing, he ends up hitting like a snowbank, some lights. He's fucking hitting shit off the plane. They go slide down the runway and they come to a stop. It says aircraft comes to a rest about 1,900 feet beyond the threshold. Okay? This is like how scary this was. Um, Captain disconnects the autopilot and plane makes automated calls. They are 100 and then 50 feet above the land. Co-pilot says to pull up. Uh, The AC, the Air Canada 624 severs an electric power line, cutting power to the airport terminal. Captain advances thrust lift levers to the takeoff go around and pulls side stick to the full nose up position a left main tire hits an approach light 861 feet from the runway threshold 
the main landing gear aft lower fuselage and left engine cowling strike the snow covered ground on an embankment sloping towards the runway the plane strikes the localizer antenna um, and continues airborne before striking the ground twice more and sliding along the runway so this is what people are dealing with you guys ever see that louis ck episode where they were coming in for a landing everyone's screaming bloody murder that's what i picture and i picture louis on this flight for whatever reason um, <laughs> aircraft comes to a rest 1900 feet beyond the threshold it is completely lost power tower control acts activates crash alarm as passengers complete evacuation firefighters arrive at the accident site now listen to this listen to this this is at 12 36 when the firefighters show up this is what they see when the passengers are out on the runway now this is a fucking snowstorm that they flew into passengers many wearing open-toed shoes shorts and t-shirts and carrying baggages baggage are grouped about 200 meters behind the aircraft in frigid temperatures occupants with more severe injuries sit in the emergency vehicles i mean what kind of a fucking asshole gets on a goddamn flight in the middle of a snowstorm wearing open-toed fucking shoes sandals shorts you know, next time I get on a flight and I see those people getting on, all I'm, all I'm going to be thinking is when we go down in the fucking Himalayas, these are going to be the first people to get eaten, you know, or they're going to be the first people that you're going to have to kill because they're going to be fighting you for your fucking shoes. Um, I don't even know what the point of all of that was. All I'm just saying is just the level of animal that is at the fucking airport. And you know what's funny, too? Like, it's just the way when you're walking through an airport you can't really see you don't really see it you know like the demographic that you're in you don't see it until you get to your gate like i didn't get the level of animal that was going to fucking winnipeg until i got to the gate that was flying to winnipeg because it's like you know what i mean it's like it's like uh it's like a mixed drink. You can't taste the fucking alcohol, right? But then when you get to the gate, when you get to your gate, wherever the fuck you're going, barring a few tourists who are just going to visit, that is a straight shot of what the fuck you're, you're about ready to walk into. Pajama bottoms with a neck pillow. Um, it's like whenever I'm in New York and I, I'm going to L.A., it's like you look at the, you're at the airport. It's like these people all look like New Yorkers. And then all of a sudden you get to the gate that's going to L.A., and you see the chick with the Botox, you know, you see the guy with the fake tan, you start seeing the gaudier way of dressing. It's like, all right, these are L.A. people, you know, and then all of a sudden when you get off in L.A., they totally blend in with people at the fucking airport. I don't know. I always found that interesting. Well, good, Bill, because we didn't. I'm sorry. All right. You want to listen to somebody just fucking tearing me a new one here? So I was talking about fucking United Airlines and Delta and them just yanking people off of flights and like what happened to customer service and all of this type of, you know, I, I felt guilty flying United the way they just dragged that Chinese dude off the plane or the dude going to China, just assuming he was Chinese, was Asian. You can give me that, right? Who knows? Who knows? They were hitting him so fucking hard. I don't know. You know, fucking... <laughs> <laughs> fucking anyways airline bumping he said he says hey you uninformed cunt and i'll tell you nothing makes the reader want to read more when you just start off with the insults he said congress and the passengers bill of rights have led to more passengers getting bumped due to more cancellations and do you think he gives any examples no he just moves on to his next point also if people showed up for the flights they booked the airlines wouldn't be overbooked. Many passengers book multiple flights. How about if you buy... So you're just assuming that the guys that they're yanking off the flights, did those people... I don't do that. I buy one fucking ticket and I show up. That's how I do it. So you're telling me that that Chinese dude or that other fucking person on delta you're telling me that 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 those are those people so they said hey you booked like 20 flights you only showed up for one yeah get out of that fuck i said get out of there you're telling me that's what happened 
Or are you telling me that because other people do that, because the guilty people did it, that United and Delta is now just going to grab some random innocent person and throw them off the fucking flight? I heard the reason why they did it was because they had another plane that they had to get a flight crew to, and they just fucking yanked the guy off. That has nothing to do with that other shit, as far as I know. But I hate what am I? I'm just an uninformed cunt. Evidently, you, who just, like me, just make statements with no fucking evidence behind it. All right, plowing ahead. He goes, how about if I buy a ticket for a flight and miss it for whatever reason? You lose it? Question mark? Is that how you run your shows? Was that a point? How about if I buy a ticket for a flight and miss it for whatever reason? Comma, you lose it? Oh, how about if you... Yeah, I don't have a problem with that. I don't have a fucking problem with that at all. I'm on the same page. I hate when I show up on time for the security line and somebody else shows up super late and then they get rewarded and get breezed through the fucking line like they're in that T... Like they're part of the TSA party. They're the pre-check people. Dude, you're bringing up all this other shit that has nothing to do with a fucking just somebody who bought a ticket and sits on the plane. I drive a car. Other people steal cars. Should I be yanked out of my fucking car because other people are stealing cars? This makes no sense. I might be an un- uninformed cunt, but you are a, a pompous, arrogant, uninformed cunt. Now, I could say that because I'm in show business and you know we're all down to earth. All right, let me read some more of your air quote points. All right, is that how you, uh, is that how you run your shows? No, I don't run my shows like that. You know, this is my fuck. This is how I run my fucking show. I don't have anybody kicked out ever. You can be the biggest cunt ever. I, I kicked the first fucking person out in 10 years because he was so fucking drunk. I'm a hell of a guy. I don't give a fuck. I'm a great guy when it comes to that shit. How dare you lump me in with United Airlines and Delta? You, 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 you hateful so-and-so. All right, let me, let me at least finish this point here. Is that how you run your shows? Or if someone buys a ticket to your show and misses it due to traffic, leaving the house late, etc., do you honor their ticket to the next show? I will tell you this. I've had plenty of people fucking reach out to me, and I have hooked plenty of people up with tickets. Okay? How about that? Has everyone reached out to me? Has, have I seen every fucking email? No, but I hook people up. I've run into fucking people walking down the street, driving by in a car, going, oh, fuck, I didn't know you were done. Hey, can I go to the show? And I'm like, it's all sold out. Oh, fuck. I go, fuck it. What's your name? I've done that countless times. So there you go, sir. I don't know what you're talking about. So the equivalent to that is I fucking pull up, stand outside the gates of the airport, go, hey, you guys flying to Minneapolis? Uh, yes, sir, we are. C- could I? Can I buy a ticket? Uh, sorry, it's all sold out. Oh, bummer. Uh, don't worry about it. Don't worry. We'll get you on the plane. And then they fucking yank someone. <laughs> they yank somebody off. I don't know. Why'd they pick the Asian guy? Huh? Why couldn't they pick some fucking white dude in a suit? You know why. You know why. All right. Uh, leaving the house late. Do they? Okay. Well, that is what the airlines do. If you miss a flight, they put you on another one. So fuck off, you non-reading, pigment-impaired cunt. That's not what they do. That's what they do sometimes. Other times, they yank you off the plane. Other times, they tell you to go fuck yourself. Other times, they say, hey, you have 200,000 miles. You can't use them when you want to use them. And if you don't use them by next Wednesday, we're taking them all back. Other times they say, hey, we're just charging extra because it's post 9-11. We lost all this money. We're just charging for food. But eventually we'll fucking stop overcharging. We'll stop charging for this shit, for all the money that we lost in 9-11, which, you know, we're now going to pass on to our fucking customers. So they take the hit. When was fucking 9-11? I know I'm an un- uninformed cunt. As far as my calculation, we're coming up on the 16th anniversary this September. You're still paying for Pringles, aren't you? Sir, I'm all for defending the fucking man when it's when it's for. I mean, I don't I don't know what you you just fucking you just brought up a bunch of I guess behavior by f- uh, frequent flyer people. So then, evidently, I I should get yanked off a plane at some point because other people are overbooking shit. 
You know what? You're, you're the kind of person that probably likes that, that uh, what do they call it, the trap ride or the trick car, whatever that fucking show is. You probably like that show. You probably think that that's a good fucking show, right? That show, I can't even believe that fucking show is on television. For the, it's on True TV. We should change their name to fucking Horrific TV. They fucking, they, they drive down to like the fucking projects. And they, they leave a car with the door open, keys in it running. And then they wait for someone to fucking steal it. And then they act like they got a bad guy off the fucking street. And I was reading comments underneath the, you know, I love that they're going to go out of their fucking way to go down there and try to get someone to go to jail. Why don't you go down there and try to help somebody out? I saw one guy, he actually stole the fucking car. He knew it was the trap car or whatever. He's driving with the door open because he knows that they just lock, they, they fucking hit the lock so he can't get out. And he's saying he knows it's a trap car. He's waving to the camera and all that. They asked him, if you knew it was a trap car, why did you do it? He said, I don't know. Maybe I just wanted to get on TV. And then he laughed. And everybody's like, that guy's crazy. I want to party with that guy. That guy's a dope or anything. It was, it was, to me, it was fucking depressing. Like, th- that's the level of options this guy has in his fucking life, that he would do something like that. And somebody else brought up a great point, okay? Like, why don't they take that car around the fucking suburbs to the white cul-de-sacs? Why don't they do that? And everybody's like, oh, it's simple, because well, white kids don't steal cars. The fuck they don't. They absolutely do. And I'll tell you, there's a point in my fucking life I would have done that. I absolutely would have done that just for the stupid fucking just to have the story so I could talk about it loudly around chicks that I liked because I didn't know any other way to approach them. If they ever did that in a fucking suburb and a bunch of white kids started going to jail over that shit, that shit would not, there would be entrapment, it wouldn't be held up in court, and the fucking show would be shut down. All I'm saying, okay? You, sir, you probably like that type of shit. You probably like that show. And you think that's a good show. And hey, let's, let's uh, you know, rather than giving this guy an opportunity, you know, they could just as easily, couldn't True TV have a fucking show where they go down there and they try to give somebody a fucking job? You know? I don't know. Uh, dad kicked off Delta flight. Dear illiterate cunt. Uh, there you go. That's, that's the usual intro that I'm used to. Um, have you seen the video of the guy and his family getting kicked off a Delta Airlines flight the other day? The video is long but worth watching in full. At one point, they threatened to put him and his wife in jail and his kids in foster care. What is going on? My first question is, what the hell is going on the past week with all these air, airplane incidents? The Asian guy getting his ass kicked. Yeah, that was brutal. Some young broads not being allowed to board due to wearing yoga pants. And the world's largest rabbit dying in transport under a plane. Well, I mean, you know, that can happen. Why is this suddenly a trend? Uh, Secondly, I have to commend the father for his overall attitude and demeanor in the video. Well, While watching, I couldn't help but wonder how... It all would have went down if an angry East Coast father were in this guy's shoes. Can you imagine an angry father driving to the airport with his bitchy wife and whining toddler, searching for parking, getting the car seat out of the car, pushing a stroller through security, hauling your shit all the way to the gate, boarding, and then being told they sold your seat to someone else and you either have to hold your kid the entire flight or get off the fucking plane. Sounds more like an episode of F is for Family than it does reality. Just wanted to share. Hope you and the lovely Nia keep your DVR relationship afloat in your flooded house. Um, Yeah, I think it's time for other passengers to speak up. Everybody just sits there silently as they yank these people off the plane. Um, I, I don't understand why, like... It's like, yeah, we sold this to someone else. It's like, you also sold it to me. And I have my receipt, my ticket, and I'm on this flight. So you're trying to say that someone else is more important. What I would do is I would sue the fucking shit out of that airline. They need to be sued. Because it's their fuck up and they're making it somebody else's. They're making it it, the customer's fault. And the level of trauma that they're bringing to people. Like right now, you know something? Uh... Why don't we all just fire off angry fucking letters to United and Delta? Why don't we get organized? Why I don't even if anybody can send me the link where to do that. You know, the problem is, is if they're all fucking doing it, then where do you go? You go to Southwest. 
Southwest hasn't done anything like that, have they? American hasn't done it. United's done it. Delta's done it. So fuck both of them. Fuck both of those airlines till they learn how to treat people right. And Jesus Christ, and they learn how to count. How many seats you got? How many tickets did you sell? Well, there you go. Um, no, that you, I don't know, man. The problem is that they're, they're an organized entity and that the passengers are not. I remember that flyers rights thing was going down a while ago. Can that thing be like revived? And, uh, when they start to yank somebody off with their fucking children, I mean, that's no one wants that to happen to them. That, that, sh- that shouldn't, that, that shouldn't, ha- you shouldn't be able to bully people like that. If you make a mistake as an airline, you should eat the cost instead of passing it on to everybody else, like to have security go down there. If they ever do that to me, I'm going to be like, I'm not leaving. I'm not leaving. If you physically remove me from my seat that I paid for and I have the receipt, I've done nothing wrong. I'm not a threat. I'm ready to fly. I'm going to sue. I'm going to, I'm a, I can't say the living shit. I'm going to sue you guys. You know, I mean, how, do they at least give them miles? Do they do anything anymore? I don't know. Corporations are, uh, they're a fucking disease. They're completely out of control and they have no, the only thing they have sympathy and empathy for is the bottom line. That's all they care about. And if you work in those worlds, like, um, I understand if you're on the lower levels, you know, you're not about that, but in those upper levels, you, you guys, I don't know. I don't know how you do it, but you guys, you're pieces of shit that you could do that, you know? If I fucking, if somehow that ever happened at one of my comedy shows, there's no fucking way I'm letting that person get kicked out. There's no fucking way. Find a chair. Fucking let the person sit on the side of the stage. There's chairs on the side of the stage. There's always, you know, for the union guys, I'd get, fucking get one of those chairs and hand it to the person. Let them sit on the side of the stage, take a picture. You, you fucking, when you fuck up like that, it's up to you. They're doing the exact opposite of what they should be doing. You know? Don't kick the person off. Whoever you fucked over, you give them whatever you have to give them in the airport. If they have some sort of, uh, you know, place they have to be, you got to figure out how to get them there. You know? Offer enough to people. There's going to be some single dude who's got nothing to go home to other than a fucking futon. Just be like, dude, we'll get you a 12-pack. We'll give you 30,000 fucking miles. I mean, what do you give a shit? You're a fucking multi-million dollar. There's a way to do it. If I was running an airline, it would just, you know, I'd have a guy come on dressed like a fucking game show host. All right? And be like, I got cash in my suit pocket. (laughs) You know, have a couple of hot chicks dressed like bunnies, you know, that'll fucking walk you down, you know? Or if you're gay, you know, you're a gay dude, I don't have a couple of fucking shredded, tanned up guys, shirtless, whatever the fuck you want. It'd be the greatest walk you ever had up to fucking tarmac, you know? Give you a stack of cash like fucking Henry Hill, you know? Why don't you do it that way instead of coming down fucking all knees and elbows and gorilling some gorilling somebody off a fucking plane? It's so stupid. Hey, what's going on? It's Bill Burr. It's time for the Monday Morning Podcast for Monday, April 24th, 2017. How's it going? How are you? How you doing? How's your week? Oh, I'm sorry the podcast is a little late. I traveled today. I flew back from Boise, Idaho, not Boise, everybody. There's an S in there. That's what I learned when I was up there, Boise, Idaho. And, uh, you know, it was hilarious when we when we landed, when we landed at it, um, you know that uh, the fucking shooter, you know, on the plane, the shooter. And I don't mean with the gun because you can't get guns on the planes unless you make one like uh, what's his face there. John Malkovich in that Clint Eastwood movie. What was it called? Gun. Is that what it's called? He made like that little plastic gun. Till I get some goddamn respect. And he fucking hung up the phone. Um, no, this, I'm not talking about a gun. The fucking, the shooter, the guy, the wedge breaker. It's like the second they they ring that little bing bong and you can take off your seatbelt some guy from 12 rows back like runs up to the front of the plane 
So, of course, he stops right on my row. So now I can't get up. And I'm looking at his dad jeans. And he was wearing flip-flops. All right. So I got to give it up to the guy. All right. You know, to show that kind of quickness with, like, you know, a third of a shoe on was, you know, it was impressive. So this fucking guy who was in the row behind me diagonally across starts fucking chirping in his ear. It was like the fucking NHL playoffs. I'm like, are these guys going to drop the gloves? I see him talking to the guy. I see the guy, you know, the flip-flop guy looking over his shoulder, right? It's basically a guy with really nice shoes and polka dot socks in first class, which is where I sit. I, that's, I, I, I don't give a fuck. I don't give a fuck if I'm flying to Las Vegas. I sit in the front of the fucking plane. That's just how I do it. All right? I spent 20 goddamn years in the back of the plane. I swear to God, I'm not going back. Did I just spill the fucking tea all over the plane? What, what, what are the odds that I was put my wallet on the fucking string to the tea bag and then this shit's just going to go all over the place? It's just, I, I swear to God, I'm having a hell of a, like, fucking four days here. Every goddamn thing, every little cunty thing that can go wrong. You know, first I break my computer screen, and then the tea bag comes out. I mean, Jesus Christ, that's going to take me at least 11 seconds to clean up. Or I just kind of wipe it up with my sock. Oh, what a fucking animal. I just had to stop it from going down the side of the table. Don't judge me. So anyways, let's get back to the polka-dotted polka dotted socks. All right? Fucking gentleman. Worked his way up to the front of the fucking plane. Or maybe he was born into money. I don't know. I don't think this guy was because he was fucking all over this fucking animal with his flip-flops who was coming up from, you know, the fucking, the animal section of the plane where this guy deserved to be, all right? I'm telling you right now, you, that should be your guy's goal in life. You got to get to the front of the fucking plane. And that, that's not a metaphor. That is it, literally, you have to get to the front of the fucking plane. Unless you don't travel that often, then just, you know, suck it up. Who gives a shit? But if you travel all the time, you have to get to the front of the fucking plane. And I'm telling you, the only difference between the front of the plane and the back of the plane is they just they treat you like a human being. That's it. That's it. It's not like it used to be where, you know, there was fucking broads up there and, you know, they'd meet you in the Eastern Airlines fucking lounge afterwards. And they, you know, you having like a fucking whatever the fuck happened in the 70s. You know what I mean? That incredible meeting of pubes that that decade was. Um, <laughs> so, anyways, this guy is fucking in the guy's ear. Like I, I, you know, I got my fucking the the free fucking Bose headsets, the wireless ones that those Bose cunts gave me, and then I found out they're spying on you. If you have the app, I had to delete the fucking app. Jesus Christ. And then I found out those guys at Blue Apron are, are like going down to farmer's markets. They're going, hey, you don't want to be with these guys? Come over to us. You know what I mean? What a bunch of pussies. If that's what they're doing. Allegedly, that's what they were doing. Why don't you fucking go do that in a goddamn Ralph's? Do it in a supermarket, right? Stay in your own weight class. You colored apron cunts. <laughs> it's fucking hilarious. This farmer's market guy was going off on him. He's going, Blue Apron, they eliminate the middleman. He's like, ah, hello, you are the middleman, you dumb cunt. We eliminate it. We farm this shit. We're going right to the people. Um, anyways, I probably just lost a sponsor there, but I don't give a fuck, right? If that's what they're doing. If you weren't doing it, I apologize to everybody that, uh, you know, wears an apron the color of my balls right now. Okay? I, I apologize. Anyways, um... Jesus, Bill, can you get to the fucking fight? All right, all right, sorry. I'm a little distracted. I don't like doing this podcast on days that I travel. I'm, I'm a little I'm a little scared of brain there, more so than usual, all right, before you make your joke. Uh, God damn, my new computer screen is gleaming. I'll tell you, underrated, breaking your fucking computer screen, you know? You take it down, you never go to the Apple Store. Don't ever go to the Apple Store. The Apple Store is like flying coach. Okay, you're going to go in there and they're going to treat you like a fucking animal, you know, and as they put themselves on a, on a higher plane, walking around genius, right, on their shirt. What does your shirt say? It says nothing, right? Like you have no fucking thought in your head. And you got to go down there and go talk to those fucking wiry cunts. Um, anyways, no, you go to just some local fucking place. You know, they charge you a little bit more, but you go in there, okay, and you, you get treated like a fucking human being. So I go in there, and, you know, and they see the busted computer screen. They know what the fuck happened. You know, and I'm not going to lie to them. 
Be like, oh, you know, uh, I got a little one at home and she knocked it off the table, the, you know, doing that shit. I didn't do that. They go, what happened to it? I said, I stabbed it with my phone. <laughs> <laughs> so they start laughing. They go, why'd you do that? I said, because uh, I'm an impatient person and I'm not good at these things. And uh, it seemed like the right thing to do in the moment. And I immediately regretted it. So now I'm here to give you my money if you can fix this. And they were like, absolutely. You know? You know what's funny is I, I always have a piece of tape. I have a piece of tape over the fucking camera. So I don't want people watching me fucking jerking off the porn. I don't, I don't want to watch people, me muttering, walking around, talking to myself in the hotel room, trying to come up with new jokes. I just don't want people watching me. So that's the first thing I noticed. I was like, wow, this screen is really clean. And fucking Big Brother can see what's going on. You know? I don't mind if they can hear what's going on. I just don't want them to see it. <laughs> so anyways, there's this guy. He's got polka dot socks on. He's fucking, you know... Got a smart pair of wingtip shoes on, and he's just fought giving this guy shit. So I take off my Bose headphones, you know, which they probably downloaded the entire argument. Those fucking spying cunts, right? So I take him off, and he's right in mid-sentence. Yeah, you just walk right up here. You hit me with your bag. What's wrong with you? What's wrong with you? And I can't hear what the other guy's saying. But this other guy, the guy in first class, you'd think he'd say some fucking guy with little soft hands, you know, never worked a day in his life. He's fucking all over this guy to the point the guy who... uh you know, the flip-flop guy just turns his back and doesn't want to say anything. And this guy just keeps going. going what you, he goes, what are you going to do next? Are you going to push down a kid? You know? Hey, you might want to brush your teeth, too. He started giving the guy shit for how <laughs> bad his breath stunk. I was like, I, I fucking love this guy. Fucking love the guy. Just fucking just the entire time it took him to get the goddamn jetway over. This guy is just in his fucking... In his fucking ear, and the guy wouldn't drop the gloves. Would not drop the gloves during the playoffs. Unbelievable. You know, like he's some star player, right? And he's gonna, he's gonna, uh, he actually hurt the team if he fucking sits down. The shooter, man. You know, I wished what happened. I wished he, gra I, I grabbed him by his backpack. Cause I don't give a shit if you have, if you fucking have a black belt in every martial art. Um, discipline. If you have on a backpack, it's fucking over. Because all the person has to do, once somebody just grabs your backpack and starts running the other way, and there's nothing in jujitsu, there's nothing in a keto. You, you just, you can't, you know? That's why, if well, you watch the UFC, and Joe Rogan will tell you this, they, they do not allow backpacks into the octagon for that specific reason. You know what I mean? The backpack, it's like the gun, as far as like just just throws the black belt right out the window. You know what I mean? You know, like all karate movies, like nobody can have a gun because then it's just kind of like, well, yeah, I can just shoot you, you know? That's the coward way out. Or the cinchy way out. You remember that? When you, oh, you can do it. It's cinchy. That's when I was a little kid. That was a word that just disappeared. It meant easy. I guess it's a cinch. Became cinchy? I just figured that out. Oh, fucking 48 years later, I finally get it. Um... <laughs> Anyways, I just wish I reached up, grabbed his backpack, and yanked it back, passed him to the polka dotted sock guy, and everybody just passed him right back to his fucking row. Would have been tremendous, you know? And I know a lot of you young listeners to this podcast, and I could lie to you and say that pre-9-11, that was the America that I, that I lived in, you know? Well, you know, I could sit in my house and not have to worry about somebody from the geek squad watching me fucking rub one out. You know, in the privacy of my own goddamn home. I have tape over every fucking thing I can find. I, I, they can listen, but they can't see it. That's the deal. There's no video. It's just like the podcast. No fucking video. I'm in my living room right now. They got, I, got, I got my TV. They got the little fucking camera up there. I'm not fucking doing that. I want to look at some fucking pimple-faced douche and play uh, War of the Worlds, whatever these kids do. You know, War of the Worlds. What, what, what the fuck is it? Warcraft. Minecraft, mind head, what is it called? As a video game transcended video gamers to the point that I actually know, isn't it, isn't it Witches of Eastwick? What is that? F <laughs> what is that fucking game that everybody loses their mind when it comes out? It's not Warcraft, something like that. Ah, it'll come to me. No, it won't. But whatever. 
That's how you just get, that's how you get out of your own stupidity. That's such a great phrase. Ah, it'll come to me. Why didn't I know that back in the day when I was in math class? You know? What is the sine, cosine, and tangent of that fucking hypotenuse? Uh, Mr. Burr. Oh, it's, uh, 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 don't tell me, don't me. Uh, you know what? It'll, it'll come to me. It'll come to me. That might teach me. Hey, fair enough. Then maybe I wouldn't have to go to summer school two out of four years. I should have gone all three fuck. I should have gone all four years. You know what I mean? My sophomore teacher let me off the hook and gave me a D minus. And then senior year, I was like, well, what's the point? What's the fucking point? <laughs> what am I, getting to a better community college? Yeah, it didn't make any fucking difference. You know what I mean? It's like when the fucking outfield's playing in, you know? And then the guy after the plate, he hits it over the guy's fucking head. He doesn't go get it. He just runs in. That's why I treated summer school my senior year. Not fucking doing that shit. What's the point when I can go out and get hammered, drive drunk, and do what you did in the 80s? Just driving around, hammered. Hammered. You go down to the fucking liquor store, the packy, as we called it. Hey, go down to the packy and get me a sexer, dude. We go down to the packy store, right? You just stand there out front, you know, with your hands in your pockets, looking as conspicuous as possible. And then you just fucking walk up to adults and be like, hey, could, can you buy me some beer? You, uh, you, you know, and there was no fight. There was no cameras back then. The television had just been invented. I mean, and nobody knew how to work these things. And people would do that. They would actually, like, not even think about the liability. They would go out and they, you know, you try to judge, like, get a buyer. That's what it was. You try to, like, try to, like, pick the right person. Somebody look cool. You know what I mean? Anybody in a suit, you're like, fuck that guy. I'm not asking him. You don't ask a mom. You know, didn't ask any women. You know what I mean? Unless she hoarded up a little bit. You're like, then you got to make the judgment call. How involved in her life was her father? I don't know. I don't know. No, I'm not doing it. I'm not doing it. And you just wait for somebody with a little bit of long hair, you know, some fucking shitty little mustache. You look for a dirtbag is basically what you did. Someone who would have no concern for people underage driving away with alcohol. And, um, and that's the way it was done. I don't even know what I'm talking about right now. That's always the big jerk off, you know, when you get in early to the airport. Congratulations, we're in 15 minutes early. Unfortunately, our gate is not available. Of course it isn't, because they weren't anticipating us being there. And then there's no place to go, you know. They should have like a little fucking ice cream thing down at the end of the runway. You know, you peel off onto a little taxiway. You know. <laughs> But just gets a little fucking Sunday or some shit. We just basically, the guy said that he's gonna, they're going to bring us to a, uh, I believe he said desolate part of the airport. I know LAX well enough at this point. What they did, they just we just did a lap around the whole thing. We landed on the, uh, whatever the fuck it is, the south side of the fucking airport. And we just landed because that's the side United is on. Which, by the way, I'd like to apologize to the guy who got dragged off that fucking flight. The fact that I ever flew that airline again. I already had my ticket. I wasn't even paying attention. I felt like such a fucking, you know, it's a fellow American they dragged off. And even, you know what, even if he wasn't from here, because I don't know where the fuck he was from. I think they said he was going to China or some shit. Just human being to human being, you know. Um, I just felt dirty riding on that fucking airline. Uh, so that that's, I think that's it with those guys, you know, unless somebody else does something worse. And then we actually all realize that United was actually, oh, you know, they were actually kind of reserved. And they smashed his cheekbone off the side of the, I just can't believe they can make you get leave. Like, no, I'm not leaving. I'm not leaving. Is the president getting on? Well, then I'm not leaving. Plus nowadays the president has his own fucking plane. They just kill me. It's like, what about that guy? What about his plans? What about his business? What about his loved ones? What about all of that shit? Just fucking dragging the guy off as he's screaming. That was one of the... I don't know. That was just, that was just really... Uh... You know what kills me? Is you know goddamn well the head people at United Airlines, when they looked at that footage, all they thought about was just damage control. They didn't give a fuck about that guy. I don't know. Am I out of my mind? That should not have happened in a first world country. That was just like some uh, overthrow the government. There's no rules anymore. Jesus Christ. I mean, they just fucking manhandled that guy like he did something. <laughs> <laughs> he 
You know what he did? He paid for his seat. That's what he did. And he got on and he put his stuff in the overhead compartment. He sat down like he was supposed to. And then he got his fucking ass kicked. Or he got roughed up. That'd be more, you know, that's two minutes for roughing. That's what you would get, you know? Um, I was on a, uh, an airplane flying back from Austin from the South by Southwest Festival, uh, which yeah, I can't tell you another time when you would not want to be in Austin. You know, I mean, it's great for films and that type of shit, but it's just like, I don't know, man. I don't know what happened to that city. I've been going there for the last 20 years. It just gets more and more crowded. It's like a bunch of sweaty hippies with L.A. level traffic. That's what South by Southwest is. And I don't know what it is. Every white person in Austin during that week, they all look like they play hacky sack. You know, I don't know. There's just something about the uh, the disheveled, on purpose, college age white kid that I know. I, even when I went to college, I wasn't like that. You know, fucking combed my hair when I still had hair. Right? I didn't try to fucking look like I lived out on the street. It was like a big guy thing back then to try to look all fucking disheveled. Like, I could barely take care of myself. Uh, look at my college ID. Look at my crazy picture. It's like, dude, you did all of this on this whole fucking thing is on purpose. The end of the fucking day. If your back's against the wall, you can call your mom and dad. All right. So fucking comb your hair and put on a clean shirt. All right. You cunt. Oh, I'm sorry. Why did I say all of that? Anyways, I, um. This was my day. I actually was flying out there that day to do the All Things Comedy podcast and then fly right back. So I, uh, I'm like, this is great. I've always wanted to go to the airport and just have like nothing and just walk in, you know, like Leonardo DiCaprio and catch me if you can. Remember, he just come fucking walking in wearing his little fucking I know how to fly a plane outfit. That's what the fuck I wanted to do minus that outfit. So I put on sweatpants, you know. And I would have a fucking t-shirt jacket. And then I had my change of clothes and toiletries in this backpack. And that was fucking it. All right. Went in there like a goddamn drifter. And I get all the way to the airport. And I realize I, I forgot my fucking wallet. Right. So I can't get on the fucking plane because I don't have any form of identification. I don't have my college ID, man, from back in the day. And... um what did I have? Um, I ended up having to go. I didn't know what to do. I was like, I'm going to miss this fucking part. And I'm actually thinking now that I actually did grow my hair out a little bit in, in college. But I still dress respectfully. Maybe I was a hybrid. I can't fucking remember. It was so fucking long ago. Anyways. So I fucking get to the airport. I don't have my goddamn ID. And I, I don't know what the fuck to do. And I have to make this this podcast because there's advertisers and all that type of shit. You can't say this is the lineup. This is the projected amount of people that are going to listen. It's a business and then not show up and take their fucking money. So uh, I didn't know what to do. So I ended up, uh, for the first time ever, I flew private and blew a fucking ton of cash. So I'm going to be playing a bunch of casinos coming up to make up for the money that I, uh, that I spent on that. I flew out of Van Nuys. Like a fucking rock star lit up my card, literally glowing in my pocket. I had to fucking drive home, get my wallet, fly out, you know, drive out there and then sit there and then talk to these fucking savages. Just being like, oh, you need a plane right now. Ah, oh, yeah, really? That'll be a million bucks. And I'm like, fuck you, man. I'm calling somebody else. And they're like, it'll be a half a million. I'm like, fuck you. And all you do is you just keep calling people. And you, after a while, you just start saying numbers. And um, I got it. I got it way the fuck down for whatever they first quoted me. I halved it. Got it down to half that, but still cost a fucking zillion bucks. So uh, I get on the plane. Talking to the pilots. They're like right fucking there. It was a smaller plane. Like when I went to take a piss, I'm like, do you guys have a bathroom here? They're like, yeah, they do. And they had to move the snacks and then they closed their little door. And I'm taking a piss right on the other side of the fucking door. And like, you can't stand up in the plane. So I am stand up, but I'm, I'm acting like I have osteoporosis and I'm trying to take a fucking piss. And 
and there's there's an angle you have to be at so you don't piss on your own fucking sweatpants. But eventually, the velocity of the urine coming out of your dick is going to slow down, and, and it's going to come towards your clothes. So then you got to make a decision: what am I? How am I going to do this? How far down am I going to pull my pants? What the fuck's going on? Like that weird kid. Remember that weird kid when you were in elementary school? You went in to take a piss, and the kid had his pants all the way down around his ankles. It's like, why didn't you just fucking unzip your fly? You know, what's going on here? <laughs> so, and then the whole time I'm just thinking, like, how is this better than flying on a commercial airline? I don't get it. You know, if you fly in business at first, if you bump yourself up, um, the, I am one and done on that shit. I just think it's the it's a colossal fucking waste of money. And I have the glowing fucking credit card right now to prove it. And um, there's just no money in it. The fucking people who rent the planes are barely making any money. The pilots don't make any money. All the pilots want to eventually fly for commercial, a commercial airline, right? I mean, they're still flying commercial private, but they want to fly for like, you know, one of the major airlines is what I'm trying to say. So one of the pilots came back and he's talking to me. He goes, yeah, we got some beers here. And I'm like, I'm on the wagon. But I'm like, well, what the fuck? I spent all this money. I got to have a beer. So I drank a Coors Light like the white trash cunt that I am. And um, he's sitting there talking to me. And uh, I'm all fascinated with the, all the aviation aspects of it. And I'm sitting there looking at the guy. And he had a tear in his slacks right at his knee. Like there was a, like a, like a vertical slice. Like he was in a knife fight and just somebody sliced it a little bit. And I was just going like, there's no fucking money in this. What this guy's doing right now, defying the law of gravity, getting me from Los Angeles to Austin. He doesn't get lost. He knows where to go. He knows what altitude to fly at. We had a nice fucking landing. I mean, my life is literally in this guy's hand and they don't pay this guy enough money that he can fly this fucking jet without a pair of pants that are fucking ripped you know maybe that's why all those kids fucking annoyed me you know what it is i didn't fit you know when i was in austin because i'm seeing a guy who actually really is struggling flying a fucking jet and he has fucking a ripped slacks who knows maybe he just had a rough night hey, he had a rough one maybe he just passed out i don't fucking know Almost Dude, out. you know my last flight uh sort of caught on fire why <laughs> helicopter flight <laughs> no 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 airplane Air, a jet, yeah, <gasps> flying back from my special in Nashville to L.A., and we got up to cruising altitude, and it smelled like burned popcorn, so I was like, did the stewardesses, like, I'll fast forward through this, because I already told them my thing, but I was like, did they burn the a fucking meal or something? And uh, then it sort of went away, and then it kind of came back, and I, I felt this, with everybody had the shades pulled down, and I felt like we were starting to descend, and then it felt really like I felt like the wing shaking and shit. And I was like, oh, wow, man, like there must be some turbulence. I thought he was just descending to go underneath it and then go back up again. You're know, like, get a little bit of uh, smoother air here. Uh, sorry about the movie ride. I thought he was going to be doing that shit. Never said a fucking word. And then all of a sudden, like my drink that was in the little middle armrest started sliding forward like it was going to fall onto the floor. And I'm like, oh, fuck. And then the stewardess came up. She goes, yeah, we're going to be landing here shortly. So I have to take those drinks. Right. And then the woman next to me. So took- you landed premature? Oh, yeah, we were only 50 minutes into the flight from Nashville yeah. to L.A. My favorite thing was the woman next to me takes her headphones off. She's like, are we here already? <laughs> <laughs> thought we just fucking <laughs> thought we were on the Concord. I was like, no. <clears throat> I, so what uh, was on fire? I don't know. I don't know what it was. I, I, th- I was thinking like, oh, fuck, is it going to be s- something in somebody's l- in bag, like the luggage or, shit, oh. or some shit, like that value jet, something caught on fire underneath there. And like my whole thing was when we were going down, I wasn't nervous because he had full control of the plane maneuvering it and all that. And I just knew like, yeah, if, the, if you smell smoke, that is a, a uh, the procedure is land immediately. So that's what he's doing. And we're 30,000 feet up. So he's going to land quickly. That's the shaking. That's fine. I feel us making turns and banks. Everything's working. But my whole thing is, you know, I don't know anything about planes, but I'm just like, if it burns through the wrong wire, if the hydraulics, like, what the fuck's going to happen? So, um, yeah, we came into a landing in Little Rock, and we came in, like, over this river, and I couldn't see the runway. Oh, Because you can't see straight, so I'm just looking out the side, and I just see this fucking river, and we seem to be following it. That's what I'm thinking, like, is he going to sully this thing and fucking oh. send us into the water? Oh, Jesus. Um, <laughs> and I was already thinking, and you know what's going to happen? The front part of the plane is going to get fucked up, so that door is not going to open. So I'm going to fucking fight past these first-class people into coach, 
You know what I mean? Where real people work, so they're going to be oh, they're going to out muscle me as they get through <laughs> that. I'm going to be fucked. If we use the first class door, I can take out the chick next to me. I'm Half fine. The people are going to be unconscious anyway, just from the stress and the impact. Do you know what's uh, was hilarious? Was the the woman across the alpha was totally freaking out because unfortunately her dad, I guess, had died in a plane crash. Oh. So she was totally like like totally fucking hyperventilating to the point it was making me angry like how fucking freaked out she was but what kills me is she's to- she's totally freaking out about that but i swear to god dude like 10 minutes earlier barefoot walked in used the bathroom and came back out like like that doesn't scare her that doesn't scare her but a fucking a couple of lights on in the cockpit you know and the smell of burnt popcorn now she's freaking out barefoot what the fuck barefoot in the bathroom is is a new thing i've been flying for 20 years i've never seen it it started it was socks and now it's fu- socks are even fucking worse it's like you absorb, so absorb it. but whatever happened to women where they decided to wear shoes that hurt like what they always have but what the fuck is that about that is such That's a because, bizarre because choice because of, of their lack of power uh, they couldn't get a good job you know what I mean? Believe me, if it was switched the other way, if you made a dollar less an hour, I, I, you, you couldn't imagine the shoes you'd be wearing right now, Joe. A dollar less an hour. Do you know that that's not true? Do you know that uh, that whole thing about the, the, the gender disparity, the wage gap, is not true? Do you know what the, that actually is? It's choices and jobs. It's not job for job. Like, if you were an engineer and you're working next to a woman, she wouldn't be making 70 cents to your dollar. It's uh. bullshit. It's a lie. And it's one of those propaganda things that they like to tout out. And you heard fucking Obama talk about it. Sarah Silverman talked about it when she was trying to get Hillary Clinton elected. It's a, it's a weird thing that people keep repeating, but I thought but she was with Bernie true. Sanders. I thought Sarah Silverman was with Hillary Clinton. I thought it was initially Bernie Sanders. Then everybody, Maybe she was. Then everybody jumped ship and went yeah. fucking Hillary, including Bernie, who then fucking endorsed Hillary. I was just like, dude, why would yeah, you do that? There right. goes your credibility. You might be right. It might be Bernie she was endorsing. But it's that thing that they say that's just not true. What it is, it's two, it's two factors. One, there's the, la- this, the less hours. Women tend to work less hours. They also tend to take risky. Because they're less- lazy. Well, they just they have joking. kids I'm for joking. the most part. I'm joking. I just, uh, I'm maternity the leave. One for the laugh. There's maternity leave. There's a bunch of other factors. They're less crazy, less ambitious. They don't have as much testosterone. Obviously, they're not as, as fucking crazy. Men are be willing to work themselves into the grave. And when they're working side by side, doing the same job, there's almost no disparity at all. There's a few jobs where men get paid more than women, but it's not much. And it's certainly not 70 cents to the dollar. And this is one thing that gets touted out over and over again by people. But it's just not true. But I have no idea. Uh, look, I had a friend of mine who I, I got an argument about it. We was talking about divorce, where we were talking about a buddy of ours uh, that got fucked in a divorce. And he goes, hey, maybe it's to make up for the fact that women only make 70 cents an hour. I go, okay, the fact that you say that drives me fucking crazy because you think it's a good point, don't you? And he goes, yeah. I go, do you ever research that? And he goes, no, but it's a fact. I go, it's not a fact. I go, it's not a fact. They make 70 cents compared to a guy said a this? Yes, a guy said this. He's a guy who likes to argue. He's a friend of mine who likes to argue. And he, he's one of those guys. Oh, he's you, the you worst. Just, you just got Yeah, you got to walk away from that. No, he's a good guy. He's a good guy. But he's got a fucking problem. He doesn't like when he doesn't know something. And when he doesn't know something, he, go, he doesn't go, holy shit, really? He goes, that's not true. And I go, what the fuck? It's true. It's fucking true. Like, go Google it. Like, we got in a big fucking <laughs> crazy argument. a web series? I want to watch you guys drive from here to San Francisco ah! just watching you losing your shit. It's fucking true. Well, I a couple times we've gotten in these arguments. We've gotten in, like, three of them. And he's, it's uh, like... When I'm not, when I don't know something, I'll say I don't know. Or if someone says something and I didn't know that, I'll go, "Holy shit, is that true?" He's the opposite. He's like, "That's not true." So, oh, if I don't know something, I'll do a bit on it. Twice, twice this fucking guy's done this. <laughs> besides, like I, the, act, I, act like I know what I'm talking about. But that's I, comedy. I did a bit on the wage gap on my new, uh, no! my new special. Yeah. Well, there you go. Well, no, my, is- my old thing was like, how the fuck did they find out what everybody makes? You just call up the IRS. Can we get W twos <laughs> on everybody? <laughs> They're going to give you that information. <laughs> well, uh, I don't know. I don't know. I, how have, they do I that. have no idea. But all I know <clears throat> is it, what it it's is. harder for them straight across the board. That is the for thing. For women? Just everything is harder and all of our lives are easier. That's the oh, overall I fucking see. message. I see. You're being sarcastic. I, I am. No, it's just like. You, I, you have one yeah. of my favorite jokes of all time What's about uh, motherhood being the hardest job in the world. He goes, How's it the hardest job in the world when you're wearing fucking pajamas all day? <laughs> yeah. yeah. If you, no job you can do in your pajamas. I love 
love that bit. My yeah. wife hates it. <laughs> no, no, I'm not saying it's it's, it's not fucking no, but it's funny. difficult. Yeah, it's 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 obviously difficult, but it's a funny. Point. I used to do a whole thing. Yeah, yeah. Go work on an oil rig that fucking blows up <laughs> exactly. And as you jump into the fucking like on fire water, going underneath that, and then you're just sitting there with second degree burns and salt fucking water, hoping that coast guard gets there before the shark eats you alive. <laughs> I talk to me about you. Talk to me about the terrible twos. <laughs> <laughs> I have a friend of mine who works at a oil rig in Canada, in northern Alberta, where it gets fifty below zero. And I go, well, I go well, how do you do it? Because they work outside. I go, how do you do it? He goes, well, you, you keep the truck running and you work for about seven to ten minutes at a time, and then you have to go inside the truck for about a half an hour. I go, really? He goes, yeah. He goes, you can't take it anymore because any exposed skin you have, it's he goes, done. you try to cover your face up as much as possible. You put a ski mask on, but just your eyes, just all around your eyes is all fucked up. Like everything's fucked up. It's like it's just too cold. You just can't do it. 50 below zero. They just work yeah. for short stretches of time. Then they go in the car and then the other guy will go out while he's in there. And then he'll go out for like 10 minutes, and then they take a break for another 10, 15 minutes, then the other the first guy will go back out again. Yeah, all of those shows make me so thankful that I'm a oh. comedian. You know, I feel, I feel like, hey, there's the lovely Nia. Hello. What do you know? Um, so I'm going to tell him the story here. Do you want to jump on? Okay. Uh, I'm, I'm going to tell him the story of that flight Oh yeah. that I had. You want me to? I'll hit pause here if you want to grab a mic. You don't have to pause. Keep doing your thing. Okay. Well, do people really want to listen to you unwrapping that shit? All right. I'll tell you a story. So, anyways, <laughs> so Nia was supposed to come out and see me, right? right? And then for whatever reason, you weren't able to make it out, right? Right. For whatever reason. Whatever reason. Yeah. Whatever reason. The doctor said you're not allowed to fly. <laughs> In your current condition. That's right. Yes. So I'm like, all right. <laughs> I guess I'm out there by myself. And uh, so I was gonna, I was gonna hang out with her on Saturday. You know, go around doing all the dumb shit. You know. Barbecue. Yeah, we were gonna get barbecue, and then we were gonna go to that fucking restaurant that every fucking person goes to that was in that show Nashville that you loved. Bluebird Cafe. All right, the Bluebird Cafe. We're going to do all of that shit. And then at night, I was either going to go to the Penguins uh, Predators game or I was going to go to the Vanderbilt football game. Um, but you weren't allowed to go. So uh, I said, fuck it, I'll come back Saturday. Or as they say in Boston, say! Right? That's right. So I had a. Hang on, let me turn your, your fucking mic on it. You good? Yeah. Can you hear okay. me? Okay. Yeah, so you like how I'm able just to put the thing together? Like, I know how to do it now. Yes, you do. So anyways, let me tell you. So leaving Nashville, so I go, all right. You know, she can't fly out, so I'm gonna, I'll fly back Saturday and I'll hang out with her, right? Mm -hmm. So uh, I go over to the airport. I get there nice and early. I drop off the car, the rental car. I'm all zippity doo dah because I'm nice and early. And I get all the way to the gate, long-ass fucking walk, and I realize that I didn't, you know... I didn't give the car keys to the people there at budget. I'm like, ah, fuck. So I had to walk all the way back. I wasn't on the other side of security. I just walked all the way back. And then I came back. So I'm like thinking in my head, see, this is why I leave plenty of time. I'm not losing my temper. Everything's fucking fine. This is the new bill, right? <laughs> I'm not going to be the new bill. I'm not going to be. I'm trying to find the humor in things. Okay. All right. Like I had my checks for my gigs this week. I go down to the bank tonight because I don't want to deal with the clusterfuck of the bank during the day. With a bunch of people who don't understand how to handle their money. Their money is fucked up and you're standing behind them in line and it takes for fucking ever. And they're always yelling through the bulletproof glass at the other person as if that person went out and bought too much shiny shit with their money. Basically speaking. All right. I'm not talking about that Wells Fargo crap <laughs> with those cunts. <laughs> what they did and then they paid off those 5,000 people like all right get the fuck out of here here's a little confidentiality agreement you guys all collectively yet individually came up with this fucking scam it wasn't me um anyways plowing ahead so i went down i go down to the bank and and it takes you know i had like three checks it takes two out of three and it won't take the last one and i started to lose it I distinctly remember uh, slapping the ATM machine and hearing my wedding band ring when I did it. And I was just like, I, I, I went up to eight, eight for me, 12 for any other normal person. But it was an eight for me. And I was like, Bill, 
just fucking relax. It's all fine. And I thought about my flight and what the fuck happened. And I was just like, this is really pales in comparison. So here's what happened to my flight. So I get on this fucking flight, right? Sitting up there, first fucking clash, <laughs> right? First clash. But I have the stressful first class seat. It's the fucking front row. So you got the bulkhead in front of you, which means there's. You, I always just have a backpack. I always shove it underneath the seat. So I get on the plane fucking relaxed. I don't have to worry about overhead space if somebody shoves 15 coats up there in a child seat, you know? Mm-hmm. But uh, I had the stress because, you know. I didn't have the fucking thing in front of me. So there was once I got past that stress, I sat down. It's all fucking good. And we're flying back. And all I'm thinking is, ah, oh, fuck, man, I'm getting back. It's fucking football Sunday tomorrow. I'm going to watch the, uh, the fucking uh, the, the Formula One race. You know, I'm going to watch the Patriots game. I'm going to maybe watch a little Buffalo, Miami. You know, I got the whole fucking I got my whole thing laid out. Right. Maybe catch a late college game. Shit, I'll, by the time I land, it's only going to be like 8 o'clock at night. So we fucking go up in the air. We're about 45 minutes into the flight, and I start smelling what smells like burnt popcorn. That's the smell first, and then it gets a little more fucking intense. And I'm kind of looking at the stewardess. You know, I'm in the first fucking row going, did one of them burn a meal? Yeah. Like, I'm smelling a burning smell, and it's starting to fuck with my eyes a little bit. And I'm not seeing any panic on their faces, so I go, it must be food. Because I know I only have a few hours flying <laughs> with my license, but I know, you know, smoke in the plane is not, <laughs> it's not a good thing, right? No. So everything's going about normally, and then all of a sudden, I feel us descending. You know, and I, f- I feel like the, the, the fucking wings are, are doing, blah, 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 doing that shit. And I'm like, oh, wow, we must be hitting some rough air. Because then the smoke wasn't as bad, and I was thinking, like, we must be hitting... It wasn't like visible smoke. You could smell it, and I could kind of feel it in my eyes a little bit. Um, How old did I just sound? I could smell it. I felt it in my eyes. It was very uncomfortable. Um, So the fucking wings are, like, doing that shit, and I'm thinking, like, oh, he probably got it, you know, a report that there was some rough air up, and he's going to go underneath it, and then we'll go back up again. And then, like, all of a sudden, my glass with the water started sliding forward. Like, all of a sudden, I was kind of realizing that my chair was kind of, we were at like a, like, not a 45 degree angle, but we were at a significant, we were fucking descending rapidly, and all of a sudden, the stewardess just came up, she goes, "Uh, can I take your glasses? We're landing. And then I was just like, oh, fuck. Something's on fire. And the the pilot didn't give any, like, announcement? like No, because we were, like, at 30-something thousand feet. And the second you smell smoke, it's like, I don't know. I I, I guarantee you, there were lights lighting up on his little dashboard there. And it wasn't saying, check the tire pressure. (laughs) (laughs) I don't know what warning lights they have. He probably didn't want to make, he didn't want everyone to panic. So he's just like, you know what, let me just land this thing. No, I think he smelt smoke like there's something on fire and I'm 30,000 feet and I have to get this thing on the fucking ground immediately. And no, I, don't, I mean, but that's I, why he didn't say anything. Because wouldn't they normally tell you, like, we're going to like descend really quickly because of this, that, and the other? I, I had nothing to do with scaring us. and He didn't have fucking time. Okay. So he just fucking goes down and I'm just like, oh, shit, here we go, right? So the late, late, the stewardess, you know, I didn't know we were landing because everybody had the shades pulled down. And I wasn't until my glass fucking slid forward. I was like, this guy's like, this guy's really, he's really dropping down here. Like, what's going on? But so when she came over and she said, hey, uh, we're landing now, right? We're literally 50 minutes in the flight, Nashville to L.A., right? The woman next to me goes like, oh, my God, we're here already? <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, I laughed and I was like, no, no, no. I go, we're landing. She goes, where? And I said, well, I looked at my watch and go, I don't know. She fucking lifted up the shade. I saw a river. I go, maybe that's the Mississippi. I'm going to say St. Louis. Turned out it was Little Rock, Arkansas. And uh, she goes, well, what, why are we landing? And I was like, well, probably had to do with that. Did you smell that burning smell? She's like, yeah. I go, probably has to do with that. And uh, so she's looking around. I go, yeah, but he, he really has, he had total control of the airplane. But my thing that I was worried with about is, you know, I don't know about the mechanics on planes and shit, but like if there was some sort of something, whatever it burned through, some wire, some hydraulic thing, and all of a sudden he can't control it. And next thing you know, we're upside down, like in that Denzel movie, you know? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. When you lose the rear stabilizer, the dumbest shit ever that he's able to flip it back over and land. Mm-hmm. 
you know, um, Hollywood movie. Yeah, he wants it up like you fucked. Nobody can land that. Not even Sully, right? <laughs> so we start fucking coming in, and we're in Little Rock. I don't know it's Little Rock, and all I see is this fucking river. And, you know, those things you can only see out the side. And I'm just thinking, get it on the ground, get it on the ground, just get it on the fucking ground. And uh, all I'm seeing is this fucking... All right, so anyway, so I'm, I'm almost dying in a plane crash here now. So the fucking thing comes down. All, crash. And, and all, all I see is the, uh, the river, and I, that's what I started thinking of. Like, it's, if this motherfucker puts this thing in the water, all right, all I'm thinking is, is stay conscious. You have to fucking stay conscious. And uh, that fucking door is right around the corner, provided, mm-hmm. you know, he doesn't smash the whole thing up and you can't open the door. And then I got to fight my way through all these other fuckers, and I'm going to drown. Mm-hmm. Um, but then I see the runway. He lands the thing, and then just like, please reverse engines, reverse engines. Those things kicked in. Then once we stopped, I was like, okay, all right, fine. I live, right? So we go over, we taxi over. There's a fire engine, one of those, and there's only one because it's Little Rock, Arkansas, right? This little fucking fire engine comes over. We go to D plane, like D plane. Um, there was smoke. Blah blah blah. The, the captain came on, and he finally says. He said, I had my hands full up here. Me, uh, I'm sorry I didn't make an announcement. Meaning, like, it was a serious fucking thing. Yeah. Um, so I, I, as we go to get off, there's two guys in the giant fucking asbestos suits. They look ridiculous. They look like they, they were beekeepers. So they, was, they didn't look like firefighters. And we go to get off. And um, as we get off, you know, the ticket agent person, like, okay, they're going to check to see if the plane is still fine and blah, blah, blah. And all I'm thinking in my head is like, dude, the fucking thing was on fire. Something was on fire. There's no fucking way we're getting back on that. There's people walking in with the beekeeper suits. It's over, right? So we sit there for about a half an hour. And uh, they finally come on. They say, okay, here's the deal. We, we need to get a new plane. Um, the plane that we're going to get is two hours away, but the crew is an hour away from getting to the plane. So it's going to be about a three-hour delay. And, you know, people were kind of cool, but there's those, you know, the 15% like, oh, this is ridiculous. What kind of way is to run an airline? <laughs> <laughs> giving them shit. Yeah. Okay, giving them shit. It's like, dude, the fucking thing, I don't know what was on fire, what was smoldering, but it was smoldering at 30-something thousand feet. And the fucking pilot just got us on the ground and we like a stud and we didn't die. And now you're fucking bitching? Yeah. Go up sure. to the bar and shut the fuck up, right? So there's one guy there with his purple shirt and he's fucking he's breaking his neck, shaking his head like, oh, I'm And you know the deal. You know, you know the deal. If they say it's going to happen in three hours, that means about it's going to be about 12, right? right? So we go into the bar and I watch Auburn uh, kicking the shit out of the Razorbacks. Then I watch the Cubs get into the World Series and they just keep going like, well, it's not now it's looking like 930 and then they do that. It's looking like ten ten. <laughs> We're thinking ten forty six, and people just eat more, uh, 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 freaking out. Then they change the gate, and everybody just is is gradually more and more like freaking out. And then they're vacuuming up the airport. It was the Hillary and Bill Clinton airport, the Bill and Hillary Clinton airport, which was you know it was basic seats. You know the Clintons, they stole so much money. There's only so much left for the airport there, <laughs> right? So. Long story short, we landed about four o'clock this or uh, five o'clock or something like that. The plane we didn't get on the fucking plane to get out of there until like uh, like a little bit after one a.m. And this is the thing: like the lady, the person goes, "Okay, so the plane's here," and then everybody's just like, "So it's going to take us to L.A. now." And the lady, and the person, the guy just goes like, "Ah, uh, no, the the plane's going to take you back to Dallas." Everyone's like, oh. every, no, everyone's like, Dallas, we, we came from Nashville. This is, what kind of way is this to run an airline? They're like <laughs> screaming at this guy. And, uh, and I was, I sat the whole time. I just sat there laughing my ass off going like, who gives a fuck as long as we, we're not dead. Right. Mm-hmm. Like I just couldn't like, I mean, it was, it was fucking scary. Right. So they end up flying us into Dallas and, uh, we land and we're like, this is the plane we're taking to LA, right? They're like, absolutely. And we land in, in Dallas and they go, okay, we're going to need everybody to get off the plane. And everybody says, oh, Jesus Christ, you got to fucking kick me. There's one guy here, this guy, they can't possibly think we're ever going to fly this airline again, right? I'm like, I'm absolutely going to fly it again. The, one of the guys who works for them just flew a plane that was somehow on fire. From 30,000 fucking feet down to the ground. It's a great airline. It's a great fucking airline. So we get off the fucking plane. 
and I slept on the fucking floor waiting for the get back on. We ended up getting back on and uh, we ended up landing at like, I think like 10 in the morning. And I actually figured it out. It took 16 hours for me to get back from Nashville. And from here to uh, Sydney, Australia is 14 hours. So I literally could have flown to Sydney, got a connecting flight, got my ass down to Melbourne. But you know what, Nia? I didn't fucking, I didn't burn up in a plane. That's all I just kept thinking. You, the fact that you didn't flip out is still like kind of amazing to me. But the thing is with you is that when big things like this happen, you are so calm. Like you are just very like relaxed and you have like a lot of perspective about it. And you're like, well, but this and this and this, so this and this and this, but like, you know, God forbid there's a new operating system on your phone. It's like yep. you have the meltdown of like, you know, a I would put everybody, sugar crash. <laughs> everybody who flipped out about all of that airplane shit. I would have put all of them to shame. <laughs> Over, you know, a new operating system yeah. on your phone. I can, I can you lose it. I can like, sit for sixteen hours in an airport. I had a great time. I went in. I sat down. I watched the Cubs. Like I'm sitting there going, like they, the Cubs literally have not been to a World Series. They haven't even been there. As bad as Cleveland is, they haven't even fucking gotten to the World Series in in seventy one years. That's that's almost impossible. If it wasn't for them, it is impossible because I don't think anybody else has ever fucking done, like, just not been there. I would have been crying out of frustration. I would have been so tired and hungry and frustrated and, like, all Nia, these things. The fucking plane was on fire. No, I get it. I, or whatever. I, I it was smoldering. Understand. Something was burning, and everyone was sitting there going, Who had one of those fucking Galaxy 7 phones in their. their right, exactly. In, the in Samsung. Their, <laughs> yeah, that they checked. That's what I was thinking. Because there was that thing with Value Jet where something caught on fire underneath there, and it burned through what it was, whatever controllers they had, and that thing crashed into a fucking swamp. Did you say, and some of the bodies got eaten by alligators. Oh, Jesus. Did you say that somebody... Give a fuck that I'm sleeping on a floor. <laughs> <laughs> Did you say, like, at the airport, somebody asked about that phone? Like, they were asking people if anyone had that phone? Oh, when we got, when we got back on the plane the second time. Yeah. They said, um, if anybody has a Galaxy 7 phone, can you notify the stewardess? Yeah. Um, which is hilarious to me. Like, okay, it's well, that a f- happened on a plane. You know, that guy's phone started smoking in his pocket. He went to turn it off. He put it in his pocket, and then right. or something like that, and it started smoking. Yeah, but that's not going to take down a plane if it's in your bag and it starts smoking and then ignites with the shirt mm-hmm. or some shit like that. And you have a really, I guess, a bad canvas <laughs> suitcase. Well, why it could not have happened? And it eats its way out. Then you, I think you're in trouble. But what's what's he going to do? Just stare at his pocket as it slowly catches on fire going, oh, my God. I think that's exactly. Oh, my God. What do I do? I think that's. I think his that's, pocket's on fire. Think, We're all going to die. Yeah, I think that's exactly what happened. He's Dude, like, there was a guy that fuck? literally tried to light his fucking shoes on fire and everybody just beat the fuck out of him. Like, that's what I, <laughs> What happened to this guy? And he was trying to take the fucking plane down. Yeah, those phones are like fuck. They always exaggerate. They always yeah, exaggerate. Got, like, like, like you went through. If there's anything smoking on a plane, on a pressurized fucking enclosed, you know, thing in via, not vehicle, but you know what I'm saying, vessel. Yeah. You got to get everybody out of there. Better safe than sorry. I know, but it's like you, okay. So your phone starts catching on fire. Mm-hmm. It start. I mean, how long are you going to take it out? Like, oh my God, what the fuck? And then take your little complimentary glass of water and dump it on it, <laughs> and it's over. You know what? I don't know what he did after that. I, I'm sure he took it out and was like, oh shit. I know exactly what and he did. He grabbed all... somebody else's phone and took a selfie and said, <laughs> hashtag fuck my life. <laughs> and then he got a deal. He got some sort of internet deal. <laughs> and now he makes 400 grand. He's the fuck my life guy. <laughs> Hey, what's going on? It's Bill Burr, and it's time for the Thursday afternoon, just before Friday, Monday morning podcast, and I am just checking in on you. My voice is still fucked up. I got two more records, people. Episode 9 and number 10. We are uh, just broke number 10. We're almost done, which means old freckles. He's then going to do, be doing a bunch of spots around Los Angeles, getting ready for my European tour, 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 tour. Yeah, 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 which starts off. In Dublin, Ireland. Dublin, Ireland. And uh, you know what's funny is I tried to, on, on 
July 31st, it starts off. And I tried to get a, you know, get a direct flight to the Emerald Isle. And the, uh, at this point, because I waited so long to get the fucking tickets, um, you know, which is a whole other story in itself. You know what I mean? Because I'm going to take a vacation with my wife afterwards. And she was trying to figure out where the fuck we were going to go. And I was like, lady, you better fucking figure out a place soon. Because this is going to cost me a fortune there. Um, so uh, turns out the, out of LAX, the only two airlines, there was Aer Lingus. And um, uh, what the fuck is it? Oh, Jesus. I already forgot the name of the... What the hell's the name? Ethiopian Airlines. <laughs> Figure that one out. I don't want to fly Ethiopian Airlines unless I'm going to, like, you know, Ethiopia. Aer Lingus, that's the Irish one, you know? Is that weird? Like, if I'm going to go to the Middle East, I want to fly uh, that, whatever, United Air Emirates. I don't know. It's this weird superstition that I have. Like the people at Ethiopian Airlines don't care because they're flying to Ireland. Does that make any sense? It doesn't. That's just how scary flying is. Like if I'm going to Poland, I want a couple of Polish guys flying it despite all the jokes about them. Hey, how many Polish guys does it take to fly a plane? I fucking hopefully two of them. You know, that studied <laughs> all the shit they needed to know. So Aer Lingus was more expensive, and I said, well, fuck it, I'm going to take that. I don't even know if that's the Irish one. For some reason, I think that's the one with the four-leaf clover. Oh, is it? Has it got a leprechaun on the fucking tail fin? Let me look this up. Aer Lingus, Lottie. Every Irish guy's giving me shit about my bad accent like I give a fuck. All right, Aer Lingus images. Yeah, there it is. Oh, it's a three-leaf clover. Put another fucking leaf on there, you cunts. Make me feel a little better. Oh, Jesus. Is that the best plane they got? Oh, boy. That looks like some shit from the early 70s. All right, let's look at Air Ethiopia. We're Ethiopian Airlines. There's no food on this plane. Sorry, Ethiopian Airlines. Let's see what we got here. What do we got here? I'm not going to lie to you. Both these planes don't look... These, neither one of these are very... Uh... Oh, look at the stewardesses. They look pretty... Fuck, they didn't have any stewardess for the Irish ones. They probably all hammered. Could I have any more stereotypes in this? Um, all right. They both look professional. Who's kidding who? You know what it is? Once you travel outside of your own country, you know what I mean? I fly American Airlines. I fly United. I fly shit that I've heard of. I've always done that, except early on in my career when I used to fly like fucking, oh, what the fuck was that one? It was Air something or other. I flew, flew like ATA. I mean, you, you flew on that fucking airline. It was, it was like like the, the cabin to the, the, the cockpit was open. They were up there playing like Connect Four and shit. It was, it was really bad. I'm t- I'll tell you, it was bad, you know? Um, no, it was. It was just like. It was the weirdest thing. You'd be in, in, an, in an airport and just feeling like you were in America, and then you'd get on ATA, and you literally felt like you were leaving a war-torn country. Like, you're just looking around like, where the fuck did all these extras come from? Am I, am I, in, a, am I in some fucking uh, George Clooney movie? That's some important George. <laughs> One of those f- selling arms for some shit, you know? A very important story that needed to be tell, w- told. We are filmmakers, and this is what we do. You know, George, they said this script was floating around Hollywood for a while. Well, you know, I'm good looking, and I said I'm going to do it, so it got made. By the way, when I was on the plane, I watched a guy in dress socks. They weren't gold toes. They were whatever. I don't know if they were compression socks. I don't know what they were, but they were porno socks dark colored socks and i watched this guy walk into the the bathroom on the airplane in socks which in some weird way is actually as gross as fucking walking in with your bare feet you know what i mean because there's something about socks that they're like absorbent to take fucking urine and fecal matter and have them up against your feet for the rest of your fucking flight. I mean, what the fuck? What kind of a fucking animal? 
I just want to say to the guy, like, dude, do you realize you just walked into a public bathroom in your socks? Are you out of your fucking mind? At the very least, there's like 20 people's fucking urine in your socks up against your fucking skin. Animals. And then I'm also thinking, like, you know, maybe this guy is preparing for when the dollar collapses or whatever. And you just got to start eating squirrels and everything. And, and maybe maybe your neighbor. And as I'm sitting there puking, you know, like Henry Hill, when they dig up fucking Billy Bats and I can't handle it, you know. And he's just sitting there. He's ready for you. He didn't give a fuck. He walked into a public bathroom in his fucking stock and feet. Absolute fucking animal. And I had this really nice male stewardess on there. But every time he went to talk to me, he put his hand on my shoulder. Take your hand off my shoulder, male stewardess. You're creeping me out. I can hear your voice, Stanley. I don't know why I think his name is Stanley. It's an old person name. Um, I need to make a human connection. Would you like some more peanuts? Oh, I saw this this fucking story. This really annoyed the shit out of me. Surprise, surprise. It said, uh, is this, this, this cute little fucking story. And God knows the internet either likes a, we should burn this person at the stake story or this little cute ass story. Like, you know, I thought my life is over. And then this kitten showed up and what happened next will bring you tears of joy. I've, I refuse to, <laughs> this kitten showed up. I fucking refuse to read any of those and I have never told any of you guys, uh, you know, I just need you, just, could you do me, a, do me a favor? Please stop clicking on those. You know what I mean? I was sitting on a park bench and a wizard walked up to me and what he had to say next will change your life. And then you get on there and it's, it's like a quarter of the story and then you got to fucking figure out how to click. It's just, it's, what is it? Clickbait. That's what they call it. All right. And I'll tell you, I fucking was able to figure it out after falling for it about 162 times. I realized that all the stories sounded fake. None of the shit was really inspiring. I never cried. I never laughed. I just got fucking annoyed. And I had a bunch of pop-up ads. So um, I, I just, I don't know. You don't have to do it. Go ahead. Continue to click on it. Who the fuck am I to tell you what to do? But I always laugh when I read those. Now. And you wouldn't believe what happens next. Uh, you won't believe what happens next as I scroll onto the next fucking story, you douche. Um, by the way, I love Facebook. I absolutely love it. I don't give a fuck if it makes me sound like an old man. I am an old man, and I like how they have all these interesting stories picked out for me by some other douche on Facebook, rather than having to try to find them myself. So anyway, so I'm scrolling through the Facebook, as us older people say. And um, there was just supposed to be this cute, heartwarming fucking story. And it was about how people were delayed for six hours in the airport. But through some unbelievable miracle, the cast of The Lion King and Aladdin was there at the airport. Right? And they're acting like this is some fucking amazing thing. It's like, no, this is the cast of the traveling fucking show. This is what these people do. Because after it's a hit on Broadway, the people then want to make money and take it around the country for people who don't have time, the money, or whatever, to fucking go to New York. The whole country can't go to New York and squeeze into that theater, so they have a couple of traveling shows. So lo and behold, you imagine this. You're at the fucking airport. Your flight is delayed six hours. And then for some reason, the fact that the cast of The Lion King and Aladdin is there, like this was supposed to be heartwarming, that it made it a, like a better thing. This is what happened. They started singing the fucking songs to Aladdin or The Lion King. Just imagine you're sitting there stuck in a fucking airport and then all of a sudden some douche starts doing this. Oh my God, will you shut the, f would you guys shut the fuck up? Hey, I'm stuck 
in an airport. Shut the fuck up. You're making it worse. Right? Isn't that what you would say? The last fucking thing I would need is I'm sitting there hating my fucking life. Is somebody going, You ever think that most people fucking hate Broadway shows? All right. I, I don't, you know, there's a very, there's very few people that actually enjoy Broadway shows. Okay. It's children. Uh, it's the gay community. Um, oh my God. I can't say the next group because then I'll just get, <laughs> I'm just picturing, you know, and then I don't know. I, I, I don't know. It's fucking people who are old people. You know what I mean? Who went to who went to Funny Girl in Oklahoma, and they actually, you know, when movies back in the day, when they'd, they'd be you'd be watching a movie, and all of a sudden in the middle, you have the dialogue. They would just break out into a song, and they would start dancing. It's like leftover vaudevillian horseshit, and uh, you know, this is like a kids' movie that you turned into a fucking musical. So it sucks on two levels. Now, you've married two fucking things. All right, very very rarely is a kids' movie like like a Toy Story is great. All right. But I got to be honest with you, the whole fucking, you know, like pretty much the rest of them, like Bugs Bunny is funny. You know what I mean? Pinky and the Brain is funny. SpongeBob SquarePants is funny. Sesame Street is funny because they throw in jokes for adults, but a lot of them, you know what I mean? The Care Bears, the fucking uh, Monchichi or whatever the other ones are. And that's like Monchichi. Remember that? Mon Chi Chi, Mon Chi Chi, oh so soft and cuddly. Mon Chi Chi, Mon Chi Chi, it's a creepy monkey, right? They would turn that into a fucking musical. And then your girlfriend or your gay uncle or your your fucking, you know, the person who's in the sugar salt fucking problem, right? Some fatty will take you to the goddamn thing and you got to sit there, all right? But at least you're prepared for it when you go to a Broadway show. The last fucking thing you need I mean, is, is, oh my God. And the only thing worse than those fucking people singing that horse shit would be the people standing around enjoying it. The looks on their faces. Oh my God. Can you believe it? They singing like angels, right? They're not, they're, it's fucking horrible. The whole fucking thing is horrible. And it was probably written by some white dude and somewhere in Africa, it's probably really offensive that whole wah, 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 yin, 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 fucking talking lions and all that shit and turning their place into this magical mystery tour, right? The same way when Aladdin came out, people from the Middle East hated that horse shit as we ate it up. Oh my God, Robin Williams, rest his soul, was fucking hilarious as the Aladdin, right? As they're flying on carpets coming out of tea kettles. They didn't like that shit either. They didn't like 300. They didn't like any of that fucking horse shit. Now you got these cunts singing at the airport. For the love of God, they should have made him go walk into that little fish tank where they make smokers go to. Go fucking sing in there. All right? Jesus Christ, I'm in a fucking mood. Would you, would you know I'm on vacation right now and I am gay, Patty? Um, <clears throat> I hate that shit. I, I got to be honest with you. I'm a bit of a, the Grinch. Um, I have major issues with uh, heartwarming stories. They never make me emotional. They make me fucking angry. Like that singing there made me fucking angry. But uh, I'll tell you things that make me actually get like emotional where I almost start tearing up is uh, when I watch kids fighting on YouTube and I'll see the kid that should have lost all of a sudden flip out and beat the kid that he, that should have beat him. That actually will make me emotional. Now, I don't know what that says about me, but, um, you know, I don't know. Whatever. Maybe that's just not for me. Oh, my God. I've been into so many, so many fucking airports, and there's so much shit to annoy you. The last thing you need. And out of all the fucking songs to break into, you break into that fucking... That whatever the fuck that is, like that helium balloon. What is was that shit people you suck on, like helium? 
I mean, that's like, that was what was just happening there was like 40 Yoko Onos all at the same time in harmony, singing some horrific, like that, that's some shit that Yoko would have screamed out while the Beatles were playing, thinking that she was adding to the music. All right. I might get some complaints over that one, you know. People like, you know, I always feel like there's something sad about people who go to Broadway shows. That's not even true, because what's his face? The South Park guys did, like, the greatest one ever that I would have gone to, but, you know, they were sold out for, like, nine years. And at that point, I just go, I, I don't want to do this. You know what I mean? Are you guys like me? Like, I, I just, like, if there's a line, I just, I just say, well, yeah, evidently I'm not going to have that experience. That's how I just, I don't feel like there's ever a reason to stand in a fucking line unless you're in a, in a, in a, you know, a labor camp. Okay. And, they, and they're handing out slop. Right. <clears throat> I was kidding. Who? I'll stand in line to go see a fucking, a good show, like a rock star or something like that. But like. If, if there's like a fucking, see how I just subtly covered <laughs> myself there. If I fucking, I got to clarify this. Like if they go, oh my God, this place has the best fucking burgers. And I show up and there's a line around the block. I just go, well, I guess I'm never going to have one. My fuck, what are we, what are we in Russia? I'm going to stand in a fucking bread line here. I'm not doing that. Okay. Why don't you fucking assholes get a bigger space and add some more fucking tables? Right? Is that wrong? Did this whole thing just go off the fucking rails? I don't, I don't even know. <clears throat> oh, here's a, I got a funny fucking story for you. All right? Listen to this shit. So I'm going through fucking security. All right? And they have the reg regular metal detector, and then they got the fucking x-ray one that I don't go through. I don't go through that fucking thing because I don't give a shit what they tell me. That thing is not good for you. I remember when it first fucking came out and people were opting out. And I remember people going like, oh, what's the big deal? You already talk on your cell phone. Like all that dumb shit that people say, you know. Um, yeah, it's like, oh, yeah. So why don't I get extra radiation? You know, why don't I just add to it? Just make sure I get fucking cancer. Right. And what did they say? They tried to say that the thing was totally fucking safe. And then what ends up happening? After a year and a half of radiating everybody in my country too much, they realized that they had the fucking thing turned up too high. And to this fucking day, when you go through one of those, if, they, if a kid's young enough, they, they fucking send them around. Because it fucking retards the puberty process or something like that. But I'm supposed to go through it? Go fuck yourself. So I always opt out. And I don't give a fuck about your opinion on this, by the way. I don't need to hear your fucking opinion. This is just my opinion. If you want to go through the fucking thing, more power to you. So I'm down here in Australia, and they got the regular one, and then they got the fucking, the bad one. So every third person or whatever has to go through or whatever, so I come up and guess what? They want me to go through the other one. And, it, and I'm like, yeah, I'm opting out. And they're like, you can't opt out in Australia. So now I'm in this fucking thing where I'm challenging authority in a different country, which is always scary. But I just said, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not going through it. And the guy starts going like, oh, uh, he goes, do you mind if I ask you why? And I go, yeah, because I used to work in a dental office and I took fucking x-rays and I put a lead vest over somebody before I fucking took an x-ray. And I got cancer in my family, so I don't want to go through it. And he goes, well, you can't opt out of here. Plus the ones down here. He goes, this thing is, he goes, this thing only sees through your pockets. This fucking rent a cop, like he knows how this fucking thing works, right? Oh, it just sees through your pockets. Really? You fat fuck? What do you know about anything other than eating too many fucking donuts? You douche, right? So I say to the guy, I go, well, we had the one in the States. They had it turned up too high. He goes, this is a different one. I go, no, it isn't. I go, that's the same company. I'm not going through it. He goes, all right, well, then you have to stand over there. I'm like, fine. So the guy fucking makes me stand over there for like 10 minutes. Then this other fucking guy comes walking over and he's got this little fucking, you know, like when the, you know, like when you get your baseball team schedule or your hockey team schedule for the fucking year, he comes over with one, with one of those. That's like four pages. Most of it is pictures. And he goes, if you just want to read up on it. And I've just started laughing like what that little kid's book you have there. That explains that complex fucking machine over there. 
And he goes, no, but he explains it. I go, who, who explained it? The people who made that fucking thing? I'm obviously not cursing at him. But they just said you can't fucking opt out. It's a law down here. Now, if I had the fucking time and the wherewithal, the presence of mind during that conversation, I, I should have said, tell me what law it is. Tell me what fucking law that says I have to go through that fucking thing. Pat me down. We don't do that here. Well, you should fucking start. Fucking unreal. So then I ended up having to go through the goddamn thing. The guy was actually nice. He apologized for it. And I just said, listen, man, I know it's not you. It's, this is what it always is. It's not you. You're just the guy here who has to tell me I have to fucking go through it. But the real cunts who are making money off it, who fly fucking private, who never have to go through that thing, don't have to worry about having their entire fucking head all the way down to their balls and their fucking toes radiated. So is, if there's anybody out there that has a fucking scientific background and can explain to me how something that can see through my fucking clothes is not, a, is not, a, uh, is not some sort of an x-ray. I mean, Jesus Christ, drinking Coca-Cola can give you cancer. You're telling me st standing in that fucking thing? Head to fucking toe, put your arms up. Oh, it just shoots beams at you. It's just looking at what's in your pockets. Oh, yeah? Is that why when I come out the other side, there's an entire image of me? I don't know. So whatever. So that was my fucking big goddamn moment. Fucking fat fuck. Make, making me stand there for life. That's another thing that they do, that passive aggressive thing, is they make you stand there for fucking ten minutes. Trying to break your will, knowing that you're probably late for your flight. First question of the week. And Paul, I know you're going to love this one because you've been absolutely obsessed with this. Uh, this says the, the name of the question is, where's the plane? Oh, yeah. Let's go. Uh, he says, Bill, using whatever knowledge you have of the situation, whether it be a lot or a little, please break down what happened on that plane. Um, this is right up my alley. First of it's all, right up your I've alley. been annoying you. And you, yeah, and you hate flying. I tell you, we know what's annoying is I have to blow my nose because I'm coming on with the cold. So why don't you start as I walk over here to blow my nose off, Mike, because I'm a professional. What do you think, Paul? You're the guest. I'll let you go first. Here, would you like a glass? Go ahead. What do you think? Uh, I think that – I think obviously the plane was hijacked. I think that's why the um, – the, uh, uh, you know, it's hard to <laughs> – no, uh, I, hear that on, on, on the um, uh, yeah, a little bit. I think the plane was hijacked. Um, of course, I think that's why there was the communication was cut out, and then they have proof that it kind of uh, diverted and and changed its course, and then nobody heard anything. I think the fact that the fucking thing is not in the water. There's 230 people on a 777. I flew that. I've flown in a 777 to uh, Italy. Oh, yeah, dude. That that's your a, nickname. That Paul's is, 777. That, that, that is a, yeah, I mean, that's what I fly in. No, um, and and... <laughs> And there was. I there won't was, go unless it's was, a 777. If it's not a 7, yeah. yeah. It's, not, it's glass. It's hey, glass the whole way. It's a lucky number, you know? Okay. <laughs> you think I'm in that 737? You're nuts. <laughs> no. So, uh, <laughs> so there was no debris, nothing. So I don't think that the. I think that the plane. They said that the plane could have flown for six hours after they lost contact. That fucking thing could be anywhere right now. There's going to be a movie about this. I think. I hope they didn't off everybody. You know, God, God forbid. But right. I think the plane landed somewhere and was hidden. And then I think the people that did it. I think I don't know what I don't know what they did with the people, but uh, you know I don't think it's in the ocean. So all right, let's you know, come on, you got to put some money on. Well, listen, what, I, I what, don't. What country are you picking? Kazakhstan. They said it could have gone as far as Kazakhstan, Tajikistan, all of those stands. Uh, I am from listen, Borat, <laughs> Kazakhstan. I I think. Uh, yeah, dude, I think that it landed somewhere, and it's fucking. It's just an awful situation, but um, you know, I I this is what I think. It's the aliens, Bill. You think? It's the... I don't know. I think uh, with each day that passes that there's no sort of demand or anything like that. I'm thinking more, unfortunately, and I don't know, sadistically or whatever, they flew it way off course. And I don't know. I mean, how – unless you dump a plane in, like, the shipping lanes, what is what is the odds? But planes have some, a beacon. Planes have a beacon. But it was can... turned off. I, I mean, I don't know. There's something that, that where they can track it was fucking turned off. And the people knew how to do it. So I think with every passing day, yeah, like it's not a good – like there, there's no demands. It's just really weird that, that if – you know, there's always some crazy reason to draw attention to something that someone does something like this. The fact – the only hope that I have is the fact that they haven't asked for any demands yet is, is – I, I don't know. That, I mean what? You wanted the plane? 
I mean, what, what the fuck, you know? How fucked but up what, is your country? You can't get a seven seventy seven. Christ, they're laying all over the place. But Paul. what's the motive of the what's the motive of the hijackers? Uh, I don't know, but I I really felt for the the family members because they're sitting there and they're talking about the airline, how the airline is handling this like a a business rather than you know what is going on. And they go, we can't comment on anything right now because basically. You know, it's a corporation. They're like, we're going to get the shit suit out of us. Let's let's try to limit how much we're going to get the shit suit. Like they go into that fucking mode. Yeah. But it's one of those awful things where, you know, um, also, you know, the victims are going to go into we're going to sue the shit out of your mode. So it's just like if people could just in this moment. If the airline could be allowed to just say we're fucking devastated. I mean, we had employees on that plane. Two, you know, and they could everybody could just share information and there wouldn't be that stupid, you know, lawyers licking their chops on both sides or one cowering and the other guy, other side licking their chops. Maybe they, they could at least make it a little more comforting for those people. But uh, it, it's, you know, I guess there's no comedy here, dude. That's just, it's fucking I just awful. Feel, I just feel, I just feel bad for, you know, those kids on there and shit, man. It's fucked up, man. It's awful. And it, it's one of the most pr- unprecedented uh, mysteries, like a seven... 77 with fucking 230 people has disappeared and nobody knows where it is and the airlines don't have answers. And 10 countries had their navies fucking just scowl at the fucking ocean and nobody could find it. Right. It's crazy, man. Well, I mean, there's a kind of good thing there that maybe what they're, they're still alive and there's something you can do to negotiate. But the thing about uh, trying to land a plane like that, it's not like you could just go to some boot bootleg fucking airstrip i mean you need a you need a lot of fucking runway to land something that big it's not like you could go to fucking right you know some little ass you know unless they had it planned unless they had it planned in a hangar yeah but then what the, what the fuck so what are you doing so you okay you, you got us you took the fucking plane you took the people what do you want where are the people it's annoying yeah. i mean they think i mean i wonder if if they had a plan and then something they shut everything off and then something else went wrong how I mean, because how- they got to be looking at satellite footage, like say even like remote areas, jungles and shit, looking for pictures of smoke and fire, something to try and find the fucking thing. I mean, look, the biggest mystery still on the planet is the ocean. So I think that that's where it is. It's at the bottom of the fucking ocean in some place where we can't find it. I hope it isn't. But that's what I would guess just for the simple fact that it's just weird that nobody claimed responsibility. There's no ransom demands. Um, I mean, how do you sneak a fucking 777 in, into something? With the amount of fuel they had, they know the distance it could go. There had to be something, dude. There had to be something. And the fact that it's not, it should be on every fucking, like, it, I don't think that there's enough coverage of it. You know? They got a picture of Justin. You know what? They, they, well, what the fuck? They probably would be a lot. Well, I, at some point when there's no new information, it becomes like this fucking 250, 270 person cold case file they're, yeah. trying, they're trying to find. It's insane. It's fucking insane. It is. It is. And and that's why I kept asking you every day. We'd go hang out and Bill would go, Paul, I can't fucking – you keep talking about it. And I'm like, I can't get it. I don't get it. Because you, you got this obsession with fucking planes and safety because you know, you're afraid to fly. And I don't fucking think about shit like that. And yeah. now, now your, your fear is starting to rub <laughs> off me. I'm getting scared when I go to the airport. <laughs> I didn't mean to project my fears on you. It's okay. You're only human. <laughs> <laughs> All right, uh, wh- uh, whatever. I-, I really hope that that ends. You know, I hope there's a yeah. Happy there's some sort of that. Chuck Norris Delta Force thing that <laughs> ends it fucking happily. But that is a rough city. Oh my god, the fucking poor people. They got to just t- t- sit there wondering when, when, what's going on? Are they suffering now? What's going on? It's yeah, terrible. It's awful. All right, great question, buddy. <laughs> You know, Verzi wants to go see that fucking movie where somebody's getting murdered on a plane every 10 minutes and for some reason they can't figure out who the fuck's doing it. Okay? And I'm sitting there having this argument with Verzi going, dude, I'm not going to go see that shit. And he's like, he's like, dude, it's fucking Liam Neeson. Uh, Liam Neeson. Neeson. Whatever the fuck you say his name. And I'm like, I like that guy. Okay? But snakes on a plane is snakes on a plane. Even if there's no snakes on the plane. You know what I mean? It is what it is. It's fucking stupid. And I know somebody's going to shoot a gun on the plane. You know? And s- somehow, even if he misses... It, I don't know. It's just... It's fucking dumb. It's as dumb as back in the day when they had a smoking section 
on an airplane. You remember Dice Clay's bit? You're in a fucking tube. It's the same thing. If you're talking about smoking or you're talking about a fucking murder mystery. How many goddamn people could you fucking kill on a plane? And you know somehow the fucking guy's going to be able to climb down into the luggage area. He's going to pull up some carpet and there'll be a trap door there. I must have flown on 9,000 fucking planes in my life. Can somebody please tell me where that fucking trap door is? It doesn't exist. It's a separate fucking compartment. It has to be. And even if it isn't, after 9-11, I'm sure they fucking welded it shut. Right? They always show that in movies. Somebody goes down to visit their fucking dog. Right? And then there's some sweaty middle eastern looking guy down there that's what they have now back in the day it was some sweaty russian looking guy it's whoever the fuck we're at odds with and they're always sweaty and they need a shave and they're down there and they have absolutely you know and they have absolutely no fucking morals whatsoever and they're always down there in the fucking luggage right and then you got the john mclean guy how many fucking guys have been on the fucking plane John McClane did one, didn't he? Bruce Willis has been on the plane. Wesley Snipes has been on the plane. Always bet on black, motherfucker. Right? You thought that one was the last one? Here comes old Liam Neeson. You know something? Fuck air, fuck movies on airplanes. Fuck all of them. They all... St you name me one movie that took place on a fucking airplane that was good... All right, and I will immediately block you on fucking Twitter for actually saying it's a good fucking movie. Okay? You can fucking kill somebody on the plane, but you know what? Pretty much everybody's going to see it. How are you going to do it? Let's just say you had some little fucking heart attack missed like the Iceman. Remember the Iceman? They made a movie about him. That guy where he would just he was sitting there talking about all the murders he committed, you know? Talking through his clinched jaw. Looked like an old sea captain, but he was a fucking hitman for the mob. He had this miss, he said. He'd go into Studio 54, and he'd act all swishy, and he'd walk up to a guy, hit on him, and then he'd spray him with this miss, and like three seconds later, the guy would have a heart attack. Let's just say you had the fucking Iceman Cometh's fucking heart attack mist. All right? Now... You're in a row of three people. Where do you think the best place is to sit if you want to murder one of the other two people in your row? I'm guessing the middle seat, okay, if I have to put this air quote caper together. Then you take the fucking mist, and I'm going to fucking, I'm going to give the guy on the window a heart attack. I'm going to spray it at him, and that fucking guy is going to go into cardiac arrest. All right, and do you think the guy sitting to the right of me or the fucking lady to the right of me in the aisle seat is not going to notice this person convulsing. All right, well, let's just say they fucking drop dead. It's so powerful. They just drop dead and just happen to slump to the fucking side. Now, I might be able to get away with that. All right. But only if that person had already hadn't already reclined their seat. Okay. Hadn't already reclined their fucking seat because when we go, you know, when we begin our initial descent, the fucking stewardess or the male stewardess is going to fucking come over and be like, excuse me, sir, sir, excuse me. Could you wake him? No, I can't wake him because I fucking sprayed him with the heart attack mist. What I can do is press the button for him and put his fucking dead head between his fucking rigor mortis legs, if you'd like, Peter. I don't know why his name is Peter. All right, now you killed one person. What the fuck? You're going to just start going around killing people? One person is going to die every 10 minutes unless I get a sack of cash in Rhinelander, Wisconsin by fucking 2.30. You think the airline would give a fuck? All right. $250 million ransom. Is that what the fuck you want? I mean, how much is it going to cost them to settle out of court? It's going to cost less than that. Because they have all the money, right? I don't like fucking movies 
on airplanes. And I don't like movies where people have pointed ears and nobody fucking addresses it. The other day, I'm sitting there with Verzi and we're flipping through the fucking stations. And one of those Hobbit movies comes on. And this fucking asshole, he's got one of those let it be 70s haircuts where his hair is plenty long enough to not show his fucking pointed ears. But for some reason, he's got it scooped around the back of his ear like he's going to fucking blow somebody. And I just look at it and I go, look at that dude's fucking ear. How does the guy with the white beard not address that? Like, what the fuck happened to your ear? What are you? Huh? You're a fucking elf? What does that mean? What, do you, what, do you, what does your diet consist of? Celery and guinea pigs, you fucking weirdo? <laughs> fuck out of here is that is that racist am i gonna have to apologize to elves jesus christ fucking goddamn movies with airplanes you know what i mean please all right oh please i don't have time for that sweetheart oh my god you guys i have to tell you this story so i'm flying so i do an episode of kroll's show um and always, working with Nick Crow, you're guaranteed you're going to laugh your ass off all fucking day. Can I kiss the kid's ass? And he, I, I fucking love him. I think he's, I think he's a fucking genius. So anyways, um, I, go, I go to the airport, and I'm taking the red eye, taking this 1055 flight non-fucking stop because that's how I do it. All right? I'm on a good plane. Why would I want to get off it and switch and roll the dice and get on another one? You know, let's just fucking get there. When it, when I drive up to San Francisco, I don't pull over in fucking uh, Burbank and then get, get into another car. We get it, Bill. All right. So I get on the fucking plane, right? I use my miles, bump myself up like a fancy person. You know, maybe maybe I invented the Cheesecake Factory, people are thinking. And then they see how I'm dressed and they go, oh, no. He didn't invent the Cheesecake Factory. Um. And I go to go to sit down in my seat, and I go to set my bag down. I was going to set it down right in front of me, and the nice fella sitting next to me goes, why don't you stick it in the middle? There's room. And he moved his bag out of the way. I'm like, all right, this guy's a solid dude or whatever. And then all of a sudden, the waitress comes by, a stewardess, whatever. She comes by, um, flight attendant, whatever the fuck you're supposed to call him. She comes up, and she, uh, can I get you a gentleman a drink? And I was like, yeah, can I get a, let me get a water, please. Ice or no ice? What, however you make it. Stop acting like it's a fucking martini. It's all right. Just give me a water with ice. Thank you. Um, and the, the guy next to me, he orders a doers. Neat. No ice. No nothing. Just put it in there. So they bring our drinks. All right. And I'm really thirsty. So I start sucking mine down and he just throws his back like it's nothing. Like fucking John Wayne. Right before he's going to turn around and beat up three guys. Three mustachioed guys in the 1930s, right? So um, I'm just sitting there, and everybody's getting on the flight, you know, and I'm looking around at the passengers, you know, I'm fucking doing whatever I'm doing, and all of a sudden the guy next to me, Mr. Dewars, goes to me, uh, he goes, excuse me, he goes, are you afraid to fly? And I looked at him, I was like, what? He goes, are you afraid to fly? And I go, no, no, I'm not. And he goes, he goes, all right, but you know, it's, <clears throat> he goes, it's okay. You know, if, it's okay to tell me if you're afraid to fly. And it's immediately getting weird. And I'm like, no, I'm not afraid to fly. And then I'm thinking in my head, wait, is he afraid to fly? And that's why he's drinking the way he just drank. And now he's hoping that I'm going to be afraid to fly. So he, you know, he just wants to open up. That's what I'm thinking. And I, I'm like, yeah, no, I'm not afraid to fly. And he won't leave it alone. He goes, all right, because, you know, you're, you're, you're fidgeting. You're looking around at other passengers. And I'm sitting there looking at the, like, is this guy fucking serious? And I go, no. I go, I'm not afraid to fly. So now I'm like, fuck this guy. I'm not talking to this guy for the rest of the flight. This guy's weird, man. It's like 30, just get paint the picture. He's like 32-year-old, wiry <clears throat> In shape, but like wiry white dude. He's got a scully cap on with fucking glasses. Um, <clears throat> you know. And uh, he goes, uh, like, there's like a minute of silence and people are still getting on the plane. And then he goes, hey, sorry about that. Sorry, we, we just we just got off 
on the uh, wrong foot. He's like, my name's so-and-so. He goes, what's your name? And then I'm thinking in my head, like, what's my name? My name's Frank. I wanted to give him like a, but I just, some reason I just went, it's, it's Bill. And he goes, oh, hey, Bill. And he goes, nice to meet you. So we shake hands. And I'm just looking at, I don't have any poker face. I'm looking at the guy like, what the fuck is your problem? I'm not even trying to not, I'm not trying to be pleasant. I'm already done with this guy. So then the guy goes, oh, hey, Bill. He goes, why are you going to Indianapolis, Bill? Right? Like he's fucking interrogating me. And I, I'm like, is this guy fucking serious? And I start doing the math in my head going, wait, is this guy like an air marshal or something? And I'm like, no, he's not. He's fucking slamming booze over here. Fuck this guy. So I just go, I go, look, I don't, I don't have to answer your questions. <laughs> That's it. And I just look straight forward. <clears throat> he goes, okay, now I'm concerned. Okay. I am concerned. And I'm looking at him like concerned about what he goes, you're fidgeting. You're, you, you, you have issues with other passengers and blah, 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 blah. He starts painting like, like this, like he's been, I don't know what the fuck, like psychologically breaking me down. All right, so now at this, by this point, they've closed the fucking the door to the fuselage, and we're starting to taxi. And I just finally look at the guy, and I, and I go, I go, you know, I, I came up with the fight. At one point, I literally stick my hand out because he kept saying I was nervous, and I stick my hand right in front of his face, and I hold it level. Oh, that's what I did the first time, yeah. I, I hold it level. I go, I'm not nervous. And he goes, well, anybody can do that. And that's when I was like, fuck this guy. I'm not talking to the guy. Sorry, I fucked this story up. Then, then, he, then he came back, got my name. Now he's going, why are you going to Indianapolis? And I finally look at him. I say, listen, pal, I'm drinking waters. You're drinking doers, okay? There's no issue over here. And then he goes, it wasn't doers. What she gave me wasn't doers. Really? What was it, some sort of spy juice, you fucking jerk off? At this point, I want to punch him right through his fucking stupid wiry glasses, right? So he's going like, you look around hostels, and I said something that just ticked him off. I was just, yeah, dude, I go, I don't have to answer your questions, all right? Leave me alone. And then he goes, uh, he goes, do, he goes, he starts going like, okay, now I am really concerned right now. He goes, why are you going to Indianapolis? And I just look at him, you know what I start doing? I start doing like this Ryan Gosling. You know that little smirk, that fucking Mona Lisa smile he has as he smirks his way through all his fucking movies? I, do, I go full on Ryan Gosling. Now I'm not talking to this guy, and I just keep looking at him. And I give him that little half a smirk, and I just shake my head. That's my game now. That's, this is my game. It's like if you're going to be a dick right now with your fucking delusional authority, right? That you're going to, like, we're in fucking Guantanamo, and you're going to waterboard me. Huh? There's no water. There's no board. Go fuck yourself. Here's my smirk. And I'm just going to shake my head at you like you're a fucking pathetic human being. This is what I'm doing. All right. And this is the funny thing. I'm such a dick. All I have to say to the guy is I'm a comedian. I'm going to do a sold out show there. And that would make him back off. But I'm a dick. I'm like, fuck this guy. I want to see where this is going. So now he's all fucking amped up and he starts dropping F. You know, he's saying the F word. He's sitting there going, if you don't. He goes, if you don't fucking answer my question right fucking now, I am going to hit that call button. We're sitting there taxiing down the fucking, getting in the line. I'm going to fucking hit this fucking button if you blah, 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 blah. And I'm just fucking Mona Lisa smile, smirking, just shaking my head like you are a fucking retard, right? So now he's, he's saying the F word so much. The lady who's sitting in front of me, diagonally in front, right in front of him, turns around and looks at us. And now my heart's racing. I'm like, where's this going? This is going to be great. I am 100% fucking innocent. This guy's drunk. And I think he's going to hit that button. Oh, I got a feeling he's going to hit that button. What's going to happen, right? I want to see what the pilot looks like. Let's see where the fuck this is going, right? So he goes, if you don't fuck, you he starts, he starts bringing his hand up to the button going, I'm going to hit that button. You don't think I'll fucking do it? I'll hit that button. And I'm sitting there smirking at him, thinking in my head, go ahead, hit the fucking button. Let's see what happens. Let's see what happens, right? So finally, now he wants to hit the button and he can't fucking find it. And it's in, in defense of him, I couldn't find it either. I was looking up there. I half wanted to hit it myself. Then he finally, he finally finds it and he hits it. Boom, right? And now I'm just like, holy shit, what's going to happen? And he's sitting there going, yeah, huh? You want to fucking play this game? You want to fucking play this game? And I was surprised. I mean, it took like fucking like 30 seconds before a flight attendant the one who gave him the booze, which evidently wasn't booze, comes over, 
And at this point, we're like doing that shit where we're behind a plane. We're almost ready to take off. Like we're pulling up and then stopping, pulling up and then stopping as planes are taking off. So she goes, yeah, what's the problem over here? And he goes, uh, I'm not comfortable to fly with this guy. This guy, he's fidgeting. He's looking around at other fucking people, but blah, 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 blah. He's doing all this thing, right? And then the stewardess looks at me, and I'm just sitting there fucking, my little smirk, just shaking my head. And I'm just looking at this dude, just shaking my head like this guy's out of his fucking mind. I don't say a word. And this guy goes on and on and on about his fucking psycho babble about how I'm this security risk. So she goes to, so she goes, okay, um, any other passengers? Have you noticed anything? She's talking to everybody first class at this point. <laughs> Has anybody noticed anything odd about this guy? And the lady who was sitting right in front of the dude diagonally from me, Turns around, she goes, yeah, I've been listening to this guy ber berating this other passenger. She's on my side. And I haven't said a fucking word. This is great. And I'm just sitting there, smirking. Then the stewardess looks at me, and I shrug my shoulders like, I don't know what to tell you. So finally she said, sir, do you have anything to add to this? And I just said, I, look, I'm just a guy trying to go to Indianapolis this guy over here, he starts slamming his doors. I kind of felt like a rat when I said that. I go, he's slamming his doors. Next thing you know, he's dropping the F-bomb to me. Then I'm thinking, oh, fuck. I just said bomb, right? Fortunately, nothing happens. So now another fucking, the male stewardess comes over right now. He's going like, what's going on? And the captain of the fucking, now at this point, we've pulled over and the plane has stopped. 250 people trying to get to Indianapolis and jerk off over here who can't hold this fucking alcohol who just watched a uh, person of interest every, every, I guess, evidently. I have no fucking idea. Now the plane is stopped. This fucking jerk off has stopped the plane. Interrogating a goddamn comedian like I'm in the fucking Taliban and like he works for the CIA, right? So now we're just sitting there. <laughs> And the captain is up front in the plane, like, saying to the stewardess, is going, basically relaying, do I really have to fucking come back there? This is the last flight of the night. Is there really a goddamn problem? And that was the vibe. And they finally said to the douche sitting next to me, are you going to be okay to fly with him? And at that point, it appeased his fucking ego that he was somehow in control. And he goes like, you know what? Okay, it's fine. It's fine. It, it'll be fine. It'll be fine. So they go, okay. So now the plane's going again. And now, we're, now we fucking come around, and he's sitting there fucking, he's in my ear. And at this point, I am laughing. Like the fucking laugh you hear me doing the podcast. That's what I'm doing. And he's sitting there going, oh, I, I, he goes, you know what? I'm glad. I'm glad you, st I, I hope you fucking do. I hope you fucking try something. I hope you fucking try something when we're up there. I really hope you fucking try something. And I'm just fucking like gut busting, laughing, shaking. Like, what are you going to fucking do to me? What are you going to do to me? Huh? Are you going to punch me in the face, you fucking wiry jackass? With your fucking glasses on? You know? That's a federal offense. You're going to go to jail if you do that or something. I don't know what, right? So I'm just sitting there fucking laughing at the guy going, I actually, at one point, I put my fucking little eye pillow thing on. You know, like I'm going to sleep. Oh, I had that out too when the stewardess was talking to me. I was like putting it on as this total mind fuck. Like, I, I don't know what this guy is. I'm just trying to go to Indianapolis. I'm going to sleep. And um, so I got I got my fucking eye thing on, right? As he's sitting there threatening me. Just I was going total passive aggressive. It's like, dude, I'm so not concerned with you. I'm literally putting a blindfold on. All right? So this fucking guy, <laughs> he starts going... He goes, yeah, he goes, you think you fucking won this? You think you fucking won this? He goes, my, you know who my dad is? My dad, he started saying his dad's some major CEO in Indianapolis. Doesn't it sound like a fucking made-up story? I swear to God, this is all true. He goes, my, my dad is some a major CEO in Indianapolis, and I will have you fucking arrested. And the lady turns around again. I will have you fucking arrested the second we get on the ground. I'm thinking, like, for what? For what? Sitting here, you fucking loser. Learn how to hold your alcohol. All right, and he starts describing the view that I'm going to have when I go to jail, like some fucking Law and Order episode. Oh, you're going to love it. You'll be able to see Lucas Oilfield and blah 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 blah. And I'm just sitting there cracking up, laughing. And then there's this pause, right? And I'm thinking, finally, he finally shut the fuck up. 
It's like a three, four minute pause. He finally just gave up because I wasn't giving him anything. I was just laughing and shaking my head. I was being a dick to him. I was because I was enjoying it. And then there was like a three minute pause. And then all of a sudden he just goes, why are you going to Indianapolis, Bill? <laughs> So we're like 20 minutes into the flight. And I got to be honest with you, my adrenaline was so going during all of that. Because I knew I didn't do anything wrong, but I thought we were literally going to go back and there was going to be fucking cops there. And like if, 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 if the fucking stewardess or the pilot asked me who I am and where I'm going, I'm going to tell them. I respect your authority. You're just some, je I don't, you don't have any fucking authority. I don't have to answer your questions. It was pro it was one of the most fun experiences I've ever had with another human being. Like when somebody thinks that they have power and you know they don't, and all they can do is try just keep bluffing and raising their voice and start cursing at you. And if you just start laughing at them, the look on their face is fucking priceless. So... The last thing he said, he said, why are you going to Indianapolis, Bill? Right. And I fucking started howling, just fucking holding my stomach, shaking my head. And with my fucking eye pillow thing on. Right. And I know I'm going to get a ton of shit that I wear one of those. I, they're fucking underrated. Get the one at Brookstone where it's literally a pillow. I'm telling you, you could fall asleep 12 noon facing the sun. It's awesome. So anyways, like. After he, he asked me, what, what, you know, where you going, Bill? It was, like, it was like a 10 minute, like probably 10 minutes had gone by. And I can't fucking sleep because it's so funny to me. And I can't wait to tell the story to every comic I know. I can't wait to try it on stage to see if it's funny or whatever. Uh, so finally, I just like, ah, oh, fuck it. Maybe I'll just get on my computer. And I bring up my eye pillow. And I like, I got to look at the guy because I know he's fucking staring at me, waiting for me to do something, right? So I lift it up, I get my fucking Mona Lisa smile going, and I look over at the guy, and dude, he is fucking passed out. <laughs> he looked like he got shot. He was sitting there, like, his head was just hanging straight down, and any time the plane moved, like, his head was, I mean, he looked like he got knocked out. And for the rest of the fucking flight, old fucking, uh... Oh, what's Matt Damon's character? Jack Ryan. Old fucking Jack Ryan over here is just, you know, the sky marshal. The fucking booze bag and God knows what else he was on. He was just completely out, passed out for the rest of the fucking flight. And this is how much a dick I am. I was having so much fun with this guy. I start, I can't sleep. So I start slamming waters. Because I want to have to get up and take a piss just to see if this guy's going to freak out because this security risk is getting up. And this, the joke was on me. He never regained consciousness. And then I really had to take a piss, but I'm such a stubborn fuck. I was holding it because I wanted to make sure he was awake when I got up. Because I was going to give him a little smirk and then I was going to get up. <laughs> see if he hit the call button again. Um, but he didn't. He didn't wake up till we, we hit the ground. And... Um, and then it's funny, then he woke up and it was like four hours later, so now he had kind of slept off whatever the fuck this guy was on. And I'm sitting there smirking, waiting for the guy to start talking to me. He won't look at me. And I, I and I think at that point he kind of fucking realized that maybe he got a little uh a little extra little too patriotic. So we stop. We stop at the gate and everything, and we're going to get up. So I grab my shit, I get up. And I'm just kind of looking at him, and he won't look at me. And then the lady who was sitting in front of me had this big smile on her face. She goes, "How you?" She goes, "How you doing?" And I went, "Good." I go, that, "I go." That was an interesting one. And I said it really loud so the guy heard, and he didn't say anything. And to, this is what he did to try to save face. His pillow was kind of stuck behind was kind of stuck behind his shoulder in like a weird place. So he was frustrated with it. So he he ripped it out from behind him and kind of threw it down on the floor and went, Ugh. like, <laughs> try to do some caveman grunt to try to still have some sort of, uh, I don't know what. So, so that was my flight to Indianapolis, people. Um, you know what? How, how far into the fucking podcast are we? That was a long, that was a long fucking story. 
Oh, by the fucking way. Not by the way, people. This is by the fucking way. Which you know that I'm about ready to tell you some shit that I believe in, baby. Uh, I'm at I'm at Logan Airport. Edward Lawrence Logan Airport. I finally learned that, that Logan Airport is, is named after Eddie Lawrence Logan. It was some sort of fucking uh, military person who fought in the Spanish-American War and that they used to have a statue of him before they had to make the airport even bigger because people out-fucked it, you know? So I go there, okay, and I go through security, and they got the giant fucking microwave they want me to stand in with my legs spread doing the Jay-Z symbol, right? Well, the Sammy Hagar from the 5150 tour. Depending on what generation you are, depending what what side of the tracks you're from. All right? This podcast is for everybody. Um, I'm sure someone in the village people did it. There. You see that? Reached out to the gay community. Swell guy. Pat myself on the back here. <laughs> so anyways, I say I'm not fucking, you know, I'm opting out. All right, sir, can you go stand over there? I don't even like standing over there. I used to work in a fucking dental office when I would take an x-ray of somebody's tooth. One little fucking thing, and we'd put that camera right up to the side of their jaw. We'd put a lead vest over all their vitals right down to their dick or hoo-ha. And then I left the fucking room, stood behind a wall that had lead in it, and I pressed the fucking button. Now I'm supposed to stand there, you know, like I'm just going into prison. They do everything, but you have you bend over and spread your fucking ass cheeks. I'm like, I'm not fucking doing it. And I know what people are saying. Well, Bill, you talk on a cell phone, right? That's fucking radiation. You fly in an airplane, right? That's fucking radiation. I understand that I am getting radiated throughout the course of the day and the way I live my life. I understand that. Okay? But I don't need to get extra radiated. So if there's a way to opt out. Believe me, if there was a way to opt out of flying... On a fucking airplane, a, a, a viable way, aside from just saying, fuck this business, I'm going to buy an old bus and just drive around, and that'll be my miserable life. I would do it. But the fact that I can just stand there for an extra 5, 10, 15 fucking minutes, you know, and rather than stand in that microwave, I could just go over and just have some, you know, sort of cute male person. Pat down my ass with the back of his hands. <laughs> do you have any sensitive areas? Um, I would much rather do that, okay? And then, you know, people have given me shit about it, saying it's stupid, it's fucking pointless, and blah, 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 blah. Well, so anyway, anyways, I'm at Eddie Lawrence Logan Airport, Edward Lawrence, and um, I'm standing there, I'm waiting, you know, and whenever you want to get fucking patted down... They wait for fucking ever. They make it take extra long. I'm convinced that they do it just so you just say, fuck it. I'm going to go into the toaster. All right. But I don't give a shit. I always get to the airport early because I know the game that they're running over there. Oh, the lovely Nia, everybody. <laughs> How are you? I'm good. Come over here. Talking to the microphone. How you been? We couldn't hear you last week. Oh, I've been great. Thanks for asking. <laughs> Great to be back. Are you reading from a script? I am. <laughs> <laughs> oh, who just woke up? I am great. Thank you for asking. Yeah. Where's the real Nia? Who is this sexy robot that was replaced? Listen to this shit. I'm telling this story about, you know, I always opt out of doing the Jay-Z thing where they radiate everything but your fucking taint at the airport. Jay-Z? Yeah. You know, where you fucking, you have your hands like the Hova sign. Oh, God. Isn't, isn't that yeah. what it is? Yeah. So, um... I'm standing there waiting, right? And I'm staring down some bald-headed douche who knows. First of all, they always have some chick there, and she just goes, you know, what do they, what do they, what do they say? Uh, male. Oh, what is what they say? Male pat down, or whatever they say. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Male yeah. support. Mm-hmm. Aisle <laughs> five, support. whatever the fuck they say, and it's typical chick voice where it it can, it can only carry. What, lo- what is what is that? You guys aren't good at yelling. Yes, we are. I yell at you. Yeah, 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 yeah. No. Like no one hears it. No. no one hears it. All right, go ahead. You know, I got the microphone away. Yell male support aisle four. Yell it. I want to hear it. I want to hear it. Some. Male support aisle four. That's good. That has a sense of fucking urgency. <laughs> All right, then you know what? They don't put their fucking heart in it. 
They just go, mail packed out. I'll well, say, because you can't be screaming like there's something going down or whatever. Yeah, but you got to communicate. You got to communicate to those bald fatties. Guys down there are gonna put the back of their hands on my ash there. Well, they they don't they don't get it. They have a whole little system that they're talking to each other. That you, you do whose that. fucking side do you want here? Not yours, obviously. All right. Well, listen to this shit. Listen to this shit. Wait a second. Let me let so me get they, to the point. Ever go hey, go get time out. Time out. Get, time out. get another microphone. Get another microphone. Hang on a second. We're actually gonna pause the podcast. Pause the podcast. Pod the podcast. All right. Through the magic of hitting pause. <laughs> One something I never do on this thing. I actually hit pause there. Uh, so anyways, this is the deal. So I'm, I'm going through security. Yeah. After all these people ridiculed me, like, oh, you're already getting radiation anyways, man. So why not stand there and have literally have your entire body, but your taint, lit up, right? So I'm fucking standing there, and this lady is going, hey, fucking yeah, male support out for, you know? And I'm like, they're not hearing you. They're not here. And then she goes, sir, could you stand over there? I go, I'm going to stand right. I need to watch my wallet. Okay, you can stand right there. All right. So anyways, this fucking this Asian kid comes up. Fat Asian kid. One of the rare ones. Why, why like, is like, that like, relevant? Like, 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 like a white elephant. Why is that relevant? It's because Asian people rare. are in great shape. They eat great. I don't know what it is. They're in fucking awesome shape. They're and every certain- once in a while, you see one. You see a fat Asian. You're like, holy shit. Right? I don't mean like he's a fucking did it on purpose to sumo wrestle. This is just a fat kid. Sumo. 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 Samoan. Whatever the fuck it is. This fat Asian kid comes up. Not and relevant to the story. But it is. On. For the comedy, it is. Oh, I see. All right. Sorry. Come on. <laughs> Listen, I trashed waspy fucking white people on this thing. Oh, you did? Did you talk about Nantucket? Yes, I did. Oh. Ahoy. Ahoy. <laughs> yeah, see, you just hate him. And it's, and it's wrong. I don't hate anybody. I don't have hate in my heart. All right, shut up. Listen. <laughs> so this 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 person, this fat kid, comes up. Yeah. All right. And the lady and the lady just goes, hi. He couldn't even hear. Her. He goes, he's like, what? She hey. He's like, what? And I, I want to be like, how old are you? That's what the fuck she's trying to say. Mm-hmm. And he goes, thirteen. And she goes, all right, come over here. And she had him go through the old school one. Yeah. So basically, you want me to stand in something that could kill a 13-year-old. <laughs> That's what the fuck I'm supposed to do. You know what? On the way, wait, on the way out, on the way back, twi- two, to- two times that, four times a month, I'm going to stand in this thing that can kill a 13-year-old. It can't, I'm sure it can't kill it. Maybe it like, can affect his like, um, puberty or his growth or something. Yeah. I think Maybe women it can affect his dick. I have a dick too. What? Because my dick's old now. Yeah, your it dick does... is old. It's already, <laughs> it's already grown. Your what balls are per- like down between your knees. The pubes. No protected. one cares about it anymore. Like it's just kind of like out of commission. I think women can avoid that full body thing by saying that they're pregnant, and they won't let you go. They won't make you go in there if you say that you're pregnant. Oh, exactly. You I can. You I've can always. That. You women always have the "I'm just a girl" excuse That's to not, get out I'm of just a girl. horrific it's, things I'm that guys pregnant. have to do. But stick with the thing here. If that fucking thing, how old are you? Thirteen. Get might over here. Prevent if, him from getting like chest hair or something. But you, yeah, you're old. Like they don't care about you. It's the youth of tomorrow that we're concerned about. Oh, there you go. I sat there and I. I you're almost, out of the game, I, old man. I almost – I'm not even – this isn't about me whether I, I feel like I'm old or not. I know I'm old. I'm talking about Samari Ben. Um, I almost high-fived myself. I actually – I bursted out laughing, extra laughed because I wanted fucking Mary Mumbles to be like, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Mary Mumbles. Yeah, what are you laughing at? I'm laughing because I'm doing the right thing. If that fucking thing isn't safe for a goddamn 13 – I could see if it was a bit ah, – Making some little baby crawl through there. <laughs> it's a fucking kid who probably knows more about computers than I do. And they're, they're like, yeah, no, don't think so. Come over here. But I have been having, uh, I had a brutal flight. All right. I flew out of LAX, Los Angeles, International Airport, that for some reason, if you go beyond Colorado, you just can't get a fucking direct flight anywhere. I don't, I don't get it. When I was in New York City, I could fly to all these places directly. Maybe it's because I was in New York and it was only an hour and a half away. I don't, I don't fucking know. It just doesn't seem like you can fly anywhere. So anyways, I got to fly L.A. to Phoenix, Phoenix to Columbus. All right? On U.S. Air. So I get on the plane, and there's two empty seats next to me. 
and it's getting close to the point where they're going to close the door to the plane. And I'm excited, like, holy shit, I'm going to have this whole fucking row to myself. This will be nice. I can stretch out a little bit, take my carry-on, stick it under the other chair. This is going to be great. Right before they close the door, lo and behold, this fat tub of shit gets on the fucking plane. All right? And I'm thinking, oh, God, not me. Please, for the love of God, don't pick my row. You know when you do that shit? You're just fucking willing the guy to sit down as he waddles his fat ass down the fucking aisle. It's him and his fucking lady, right? So he fucking comes all the way up, comes to my row, and he's just standing there. And I'm hoping he's just standing there because he's putting his stuff in the overhead compartment. I can literally feel the fucking heat radiating off of his body from the 22 years of mistakes that he's put in his goddamn stomach. All right? And what does he do? He, oh, yeah, I'm in that row. I'm in your row, so I got to get up. And what does he do? His, he lets his fucking girl sit by the window, and then he sits in the middle seat. And this fat fucking tub of fucking shit. This dude was so fat, I was sitting behind his back fat. You know what I mean? He was like fat and round. It was like sitting next to a planet with a head. You know, it was like you could the roundness of this guy. Okay, so he's trying to be less fat. God bless him. So he crosses his arms when all it does is just cause his fat lat to fucking bulge out even more into my airspace that I fucking paid for. And it's not real. All I'm thinking is why the fuck didn't he take the window seat and then post up against his girlfriend? My shoulder was getting hot. From his arm, it was he was on me. This fucking guy was on me. If I was claustrophobic, they would have had to turn the plane around. This is how much this guy was in my chair. And I'm thinking, why the hell? Why didn't you just take the fucking window seat, you fat fuck? Have a little bit of fucking consideration, you tub of shit. You know, with your basketball shorts, like you actually ever played a goddamn day in your life. His fucking legs spread out like he was going to give birth to a baby calf. You know? Why don't you sit near the window? You know what I realized after a while? He didn't sit near the window because he's so fucking fat, he can't. He can't. If he sat by the window, his other fat lat would have blown out the window. We all would have got sucked out. Unless his tub of shit body fucking somehow got stuck in the fuselage. Which if you saw him... Wouldn't, wouldn't be beyond you, a possibility. Unfucking believable. And he's sitting there. This is what kills me. He's sitting there and he's, he's biting his nails. And I just want to be like, dude, do you ever stop eating? Is there a moment? And you're, you're literally consuming yourself right now. I know, I know, I know what you guys are thinking. Well, hey, Bill, why don't you fly first class? Oh, yeah? Well, hey, why don't you go fuck yourself, hypothetical person who said that? Okay, I understand I bought a coach seat. I know what that means. That means my fucking knees are going to be in my chest. That means if I'm even slightly leaned forward and the guy in front of me reclines, he's going to hit me in the head. I understand that. Okay? I get it. But that doesn't mean that this tub of shit... I shouldn't have to pay an extra couple of fucking grand uh, or whatever, 1500 bucks. So somebody else's lard isn't in my lap. I am full on 100% behind you having to buy two seats when you're on an airplane. Okay? I'm sorry you're fat. Okay? But you made your choices. This is one of the things. This is a good thing. You got to buy two seats. You got less money for cookies. Maybe that, that'll be a goal. Maybe that'll be your bottoming out. But it, it's it's absolutely ridiculous that I have to say I'm literally leaning out into the fucking aisle my giant microwave oven head is out there and then I got to deal with the stewardess going excuse me sir excuse me sir can you not stare in this chair please sir All right I gotta watch if I'm, I can't start yelling here I'm in a hotel room again I already got one strike against me they probably build a fucking file on me um yeah, I'm leaning out there. That was this is the best part. The food cart comes. Okay, they ask me what do I, you know, they ask the dude what he wants to drink. He goes, "Can I have a coke? Can I have a coke?" 
I just want to be like, dude, how about a water? How about a salad? Are you trying to make yourself even fatter during the flight? Do you know what that soda's going to do to your already distended fucking belly? You already can't even put the fucking tray down. This dude couldn't put the tray down. He tried. He tried to put the tray down. Oh, my God, this fucking guy. I swear to God. The thoughts I was thinking, it was embarrassing. I was sitting there thinking, like, you know, I'm so glad this dude's going to die young. Can you believe that? I'm not happy in real life that that's going to happen. But that's how fucking uncomfortable I was, and that's how fucking mad I was at this guy. Absolutely. You got to buy two seats, people. You got to do it. I love when they try to leave the fucking arm up, too. I don't play that. I fucking shave that ham right down. I bring the fucking thing right the fuck down. Fucking sit here making me uncomfortable, and you, you want to relax? If I could, I'd put my foot on your chest and make your belt even tighter. That's what i do to you. Cut off your circulation to your legs. Maybe you'd get up and take a walk. There's no excuse for it. You know, and I know this is probably coming off insensitive, but you know something? I've been a redhead my whole life. Nobody gives a shit. We don't get, we don't, we're not considered handicapped. Capped? We're not considered handicapped. This always happens when I scream all weekend. We're not considered handicapped. We don't get our own parking spaces. These tubs of shit, they're getting their own parking spaces now. Making a shorter walk to the store, making them even fatter. The only positive thing I can say about this guy was he only went to Phoenix and he didn't smell. I got to give him that. He didn't smell. I don't know if he fucking jumped in a goddamn pond, you know, killed 200 fish before he got onto the flight. I don't know what he did, but he, he didn't smell. But I swear to God, you know, what, you know what kills me is I ranted about this on the radio here in Columbus. And somebody called up the radio station and said, I'm 5'8", 300 pounds. And I love to fly. I'm never listening to this radio station again. Can you believe that? This dude actually felt like he was the victim. You know, that'd be like if some wife who got the shit kicked out of her ranted about her piece of shit husband for slapping the shit out of her. And then some guy calls up, hey, I got issues with women and I slapped the shit out of my wife and I'm never listening to this radio station again. You know? Give me a fucking break. You know, you know what you need to do. Eat a salad. Go for a walk. You don't have to put money down for for the gym. Just go for a walk. It's actually easier to do cardio when you're not at the gym. Because when you're at the gym, at any point, you can just get off and walk 100 yards to your car. Your car is always 100 yards away. When you walk out your front door and you walk a mile away, what, are you going to just quit and lay down on the ground? you got to walk back. There's two miles. Easiest two miles you'll ever fucking do. Or, or, or be a tub of shit. Be fat. That, that's your right. Okay? But buy two seats. That's all I'm going to say. All right? <laughs> do I wear short shorts showing off my milk white legs offending everybody's eyeballs? No, I don't. I'm considerate. I wear the Jordan ones. They come down right over my little white knees. Um, you're listening to the Monday Morning Podcast, and yes, it is insensitive. Doesn't mean it's wrong. I'm right. I'm right on this one. I'll fucking... Hey, fatties who listen to this podcast, God bless you. Have yourself a Sunday on a Monday. Right? I understand it. Your emotional leader, something fucking bad happened to you. So food is your friend. And then you go in there. I, I get it. I get it. I want you to lose weight. I want you to feel good about yourself. But until you're at that weight where you're not, you know, spilling into my seat, you got to buy two seats. I shouldn't have to suffer because you ate all the cookies in the house. That's not my fucking fault. Oh, Jesus, Bill, we got it. I actually tweeted this week that fat people are the new secondhand smoke. <laughs> hey, you want to be fat? Go outside. <laughs> All right, question. Bill, being a frequent flyer, don't you uh, think this controversy over the new body scanners is fucking bullshit? Uh, a guy hit a bomb in his fucking underwear. 
What exactly do these complaining bastards expect us to scale back on security? We have become so pampered and used to the utmost comfort that we are doing the terrorist job for them. Who gives a fuck if someone is seeing your cock or your tits? He or she is seeing hundreds a day. Uh, You, sir, are a fucking moron. All right? If you go through airport security, I don't know if you've noticed, they're not exactly the fucking Navy SEALs. Although they have gotten better in the last couple of years. But they don't, you know, they're always shooting the shit. They're always fucking around. They're not really paying attention. It doesn't really look like it's a high-paying fucking job. All right, let's go with that. All right, let's go with, secondly, uh, a body scanner, entire body scanner. Let's get over the fact that you don't want a naked picture of yourself, which is your fucking right to not want that, by the way. All right? Secondly, I don't know about you, but I fly every other weekend, and when I go on benders like this at the end of the year because I owe the banker cunts and the fucking government a bunch of money, I go on like, you know, Four or five weeks in a row, I fly. All right? So I got to get a full-on body scan uh, on the way out and the way back. You know, I really have to start checking to see that I'm not going to be completely filled up with memory on this fucking Olympus LS10. They have the goddamn time right there. I apologize. Let me get back to what the fuck I was talking about. Um, Yeah, so... So you're basically saying that I shouldn't complain that like six weeks in a fucking row and and a total of 12 times, I'm going to take radiation from head to fucking toe. All right. And don't even tell me, oh, it's only for a fucking second. Dude, when you go to get your fucking, you know, teeth x-rayed, they put that leather fucking that lead vest leather, that lead vest over all your fucking organs. And then they go, they leave the fucking room. And I'm supposed to stand there like I'm at a Jay-Z concert and I'm getting frisked at the same time with my fucking leg spread and doing that Jay-Z thing over my head. And they're going to, no, fuck that. There's cancer in my family. I'm not doing it. I'm not doing it. Pat me down. So that's what I did on the, on the way out. I was like, yeah, I'm not doing that thing. And I said to pat me down. So then, you know, they did it. And they said, and they came up to me and this guy said, uh, I have to pat you down. Uh, are there any parts of your body that are, uh, are that are that are sensitive? And I wanted to be like, well, I think all of us have areas of our body that are sensitive. <laughs> Just to creep them out. I was basically like, no, go ahead, grab my balls. I don't give a fuck, right? I didn't know what he was going to do, right? So he puts on his dishwashing gloves and starts patting me down. And they don't grab your balls. What they do is they go way up your inner thigh. And he, he gives you your ball bag a little of a, a backhand on each side of the ball bag, you know. So, and I got to admit, it made me laugh a little bit. <laughs> yeah, I don't give a fuck. Yeah, go fuck yourself. Yeah, you're not taking a fucking head to toe naked fucking picture of me as you, you know. I, you're, not, you're not fucking radiating my entire body so I can get on a fucking puddle jumper to go to Hartford. I'm not doing that. Go fuck yourself. Jesus Christ. Lazy motherfuckers. You know, what, what people forget, I, I, just don't, I don't get it. You know what I mean? This, this, I, I understand that they're, you know, quote, unquote, trying to keep me safe. But what I don't understand is that people don't understand that during those times of fear and let's try to keep you safe, the amount of fucking, like, privilege that you lose and you never fucking get it back. And they always take a little more than they should. That's why it's great that people bitch, and it's great that you can bitch, because if you bitched like this in China, they'd probably put you to death and then harvest your fucking organs. All right, so, yeah, I think it's fine with the amount of fucking cancer that's out there and that people fucking talk on their cell phones all the goddamn time. You don't want to end it, you know, you don't want to add to it with with head-to-toe fucking zap of fucking radiation. You know, I'm, I'm standing there. I don't have my fucking shoes on. I'm stripped down to a fucking T-shirt. I got jeans on and shit. I don't have anything on me. You know? And there's all this fucking flipping out about the fucking airplanes. What about trains? You could literally have a box 
that said, I have dynamite on the side of it, and you could the fucking conductor would help you carry it on. There's no metal detectors. There's no nothing, despite the fact that 15 years ago, that guy got on the Long Island Ra- Railroad and shot, and shot the whole fucking thing up. So I don't like that. I don't like that whole fucking eye scan, scan my retina shit. No, go fuck yourself. I'm not doing that. And um, it's your right, dude. If you have no problem with it, you know, good luck with your testicular slash brain slash tongue slash throat slash big toe cancer. If you fly all the fucking time like a lot of people, I'm not doing that shit. I'm not fucking doing that. That's, uh, yeah, fuck that. You know, and you're acting like before this shit went down, they haven't been keeping us safe. You know? They have been. Since 9-11, knock on wood, nothing has fucking happened. Before those stupid body scanners, nothing has fucking happened. All right? We're fine. Everything is fucking fine. You don't need those goddamn things. You know what's funny is if next week somebody actually does something, the conspiracy theorists are going to say that the government did it because people were refusing those body scanners. <laughs> All right, that's just my opinion, man. I, I seriously, you know, I'm not trying to get head-to-toe radiation. I, I get that they're trying to fucking keep me safe. But, you know, if they truly wanted to keep me fucking safe, they wouldn't be shooting the shit and joking the amount of fucking times that they are when I'm going through. All right, and that happens a lot. Specifically, it's the person who's looking at the TV screen, is talking about whatever, and is joking and laughing, which you're going to do because they have an unbelievably boring fucking job. I would be doing the same goddamn thing. But if they truly gave a fuck, they would spend a lot more money on the people that they get to do the security rather than these newfangled fucking goddamn machines. I'm not going through those. Pat me down. Give, give my fucking uh, my ball bag a couple of backhands with your dishwashing gloves. I don't give a fuck, but I'm not going to stand there, spread eagle, and end up with cancer or the taint. <laughs> All right, but, you know, if you guys want to do it, go ahead and do it. I don't give a fuck. But I hope enough of you say no so it doesn't become mandatory. All right. But I got to tell you, man, I had the scariest fucking flight I've had in like 10 years flying in from Chicago to Albany, right? I live out here on the fucking West Coast now, so for some goddamn reason, Los Angeles is this international airport, but, well, that's not true. It's because it's the other side of the country. I mean, I can get a fucking direct flight to, like, I don't know, Bakersfield. I'm trying to pick some fucking obscure city, but whatever. To get to Albany, I got to fly into Chicago, and then I, that which, which, which was no problem. And then I flew from Chicago to Albany, and when we came in on final approach, I don't know what happened. The guy's like, we're coming in for final approach, and we just was we were in this fucking soup. We were in this chop, or whatever the pilots call it, and we're just going up 500 feet, down 600, back up 7, and we're just in this shit. And uh, as, my, as I've stated before here, on the podcast, I don't mind turbulence when I'm way up in the fucking air. I don't give a shit. Drop a thousand feet. We're thirty thousand off the fucking ground. I don't care, right? But when you're like coming in on final approach, all of a sudden dropping five, six hundred feet, you know, you start hitting TV antennas like back in the day, like Fred Flintstone when he didn't want to get busted for whatever the fuck he was doing, right? And he started driving around the neighborhood, lassoing the antennas. What the hell was he doing? Was he, was he cheating on Wilma? Am I doing some some stand-up comedy material from the 1980s? Is that, is that what I'm doing? What was the deal with Fred? Um, so we're just in this shit, and this guy says we're in final approach, okay? And like 15 fucking minutes later, I'm, I'm, I'm just looking out the window, doing what I always do, going, give me some lights. Let me see some fucking lights of the city. So I can figure out how high up we are. So I can figure out how much I need to be freaking out. And we just kept flying through this shit. And it was like really, really bad to the point. I was actually feeling a little bit queasy. Right? And this guy's not saying shit. And I'm thinking, fuck, we're flying into Albany. Who flies into Albany? You know? Is that the the fucking... Is that Tom Brady flying that plane? Or do we got the backup? Why don't we know his fucking name? Albany? The studs. 
They fly into JFK. They fly into LaGuardia. They fly into Newark. They don't fly into Albany, right? So I'm sitting there freaking the fuck out, going, oh, God. We got we got the fucking backup to the backup. We got Trent Dilfer's backup pl- flying the goddamn plane. And uh, so I did something I haven't done in a while. I started praying to God, huh? Oh, Jesus. That's how bad it was. I had to fucking hedge my bets going, hey, you know, I've been talking a lot of trash about you on the Monday morning podcast. Wait a minute. Do I even need to explain it considering you know everything? Um, no, seriously. I was like, all right, all right. Sorry for this. Sorry for that. Sorry for my sins. And I'm really starting to get nervous because we're still fucking, you know, people's stomachs are dropping and I'm really fucking praying. And then 